direct me. And you see, when we go up to the, when you get You know what, I've been carrying him for the last... Great Kermit.
Yeah, <laughs> Chatland's having you. Hello and welcome here to Hull Rugby Union where we're going to be watching Hull Rugby Union take on Pocklington. Hull currently third and Pocklington propping up the bottom of the di division here, Cassie. What do you think today? It's a, it's a tough league, uh, this, uh, this Northern Prem. Uh, yeah. Pocklington have made their debut this season in, in this league uh, and they're finding it a struggle. Um, but they're, they're here, they're, they've got nothing to lose. Big game for them, local derby. Hull looking to consolidate themselves at the top. Yeah, uh, pushing on perhaps for a playoff place, or maybe even an automatic promotion. I say, just for the viewers at home, we, we've got uh, the league basically, you know, Hull at a third at the moment, pushing basically for that second team spot where it's, you know, they've got the chance of uh, playing in the playoffs and then getting uh, the promotion, or indeed if they do particularly well and get and win the league, they, you know, they'll be up, which will be great for them. Which will yeah. be good. Good for local rugby, for yeah. East Yorkshire, East Yorkshire rugby in particular. The last time they played, though, uh, Hull beat Pocklington at Pocklington, 30 points to nil. I was just speaking to their coach a bit earlier on. It should have been 60 nil. Well, yeah, well, so, who knows? Who you knows? can't do rugby maths. You can't, maths, you can't you? do rugby maths. I tell you who cannot do rugby maths. We're here, joined by our good friend. Come come through. Mr Bruce Wilkie. Bruce Wilkie. Wilkie. Hi, Terry. Hi, Chair Hello, Chair Bruce. Bruce. Chairman of... It is chairman now, aren't you? Uh, president these days. Are you? But, um, I've got my notes are wrong then because well, it says you're we chairman. Well, you can call me whatever you like. Don't yeah. walk away Don't from me. Come and sit here. So talk to me about your role at Hull Rugby Union at the moment. Uh, well, I'm president of uh, Hull Rugby Union. Um, uh, the other title is Dog's Body. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, I spend quite a lot of my uh, time, about 20 hours a week, uh, working on club business. We've got... At this club, um, a really dedicated core of volunteers who uh, who put a lot of work in, and I think that's probably showing on the pitch now. I say, what I've noticed about this place, it's been developed really well. I mean, I was coaching here uh, a few years ago. Um, great set of people. But uh, the, the, the pitch looks incredible, doesn't it? The pitch looks really good. I mean, I think it's one of the only games that's on around here. I mean, the engines are being called off, you know, so if you if you sat looking for a game to watch, come down to Hull Rugby Union, down chance after today. But the pitch looks immaculate. Um, absolutely, Terry. Uh, if you want to watch rugby, we're normally we're always going to be on. We played a match against Ionians three or four years ago. 
nobody else in Yorkshire played. It was like a biblical flood, but this game was on. This pitch is a great pitch. What's a biblical flood? What goes a on there? A biblical flood. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a big one, Terry. <laughs> OK, that's OK. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, I mean, you watched the game last time uh, Pocklington played home yep. at Pocklington. Um, word on the street should have been 6 0. Hull played particularly well that day to, to nil Pocklington's no main feet. It's a good thing to do. Well, far be it from me to sort of fall out with uh, Pocklington's coach. But again. I, I, again. But, but I saw the match as slightly different that day. Uh, until 70 minutes, um, they were very much still in the game. We scored quite a lot of points in the last 10 minutes. Um, Okay, they didn't score any points, but they gave us a tougher game as you would want. So, yeah. I, I mean, I see it entirely differently from their coach. Right. And, and I would like to know, Bruce, your prediction for this season for Hull? Um, well, being honest, I think Preston have probably got it uh, tied up. It's between Lim and ourselves, I think, for second place, for the playoff place. We'll be going all out to get that playoff place. We've got the ability... Um, if they want it enough, we will get it. Yeah, yeah. So second place, I think, for us. Do you think so? Playoff then? Yep, playoff. And if we play off as we will against the Midlands team, usually the North teams are quite strong. Uh, I yeah, stronger. I would fancy our chances against uh, a Midlands team. So do you know who you like? Who's up in the running? For uh, I don't actually at the moment because their league is a lot more fluid than this one is. Mm. Um, uh, so we don't know who we'd get, uh, but we've, we've got a very tough January. If we come out of January with two wins out of three, we will be second, I think. Right, OK. But they're, they're tough games, and um, we've got uh, Preston away, we've got Lim away. You know, these are not going to be easy games. So you've got, a, you've got a bit of a dinner in there at the moment, have you? You have to get back there and have a few pie and peas? <laughs> oh, yes. I, uh, I'll be on my way, Terry. Well, I can take it. That's your cue. <laughs> <laughs> See you later on again. Cheers. Cheers. Great. OK, and we're going to be joined now by Henry Mitchell from Pocklington Rugby Union. Director Henry? Rugby. Director of Rugby from Pocklington. Hi, guys. Hi, Henry. How are you doing? Nice to see you. How are you doing? So, come talk in, to me. In. It was you that said it should have been 60 now, whereas... You know, the whole guys are saying, actually, uh, Pocklington did quite well last time they played. Oh, I think Bruce, is, Bruce has been quite fair there, but th the problem is with Hull, they've got class all over the park, and they we had quite a lot of possession, but we didn't turn that into uh, into points, whereas if we if we give the ball away to sides like Hull, they they, they, they seem to punish us very very aggressively and very quickly. So yeah. this, this season, you're first in uh, the Northern Prem, yeah. coming up champions last year. Yeah. Uh, how have you found it in general? Huge change. You know, we're playing against sides now. Last year, we, we, we dominated sides, whereas this year we're coming against sides and they've got power all over the, all over the pitch from, from 1 to 15. So, and it's, it's the small errors. If you make small errors, you get punished. And, and our, you know, we're, growing as a, we're growing as a club, which is very important, and we're, and we're getting better each week. Um, but so are the other sides, and it's, you know, it's, quite, um, it's quite tough. Quite tough. So just watching you guys warm up, I mean, your coaches then, just, just enlighten our viewers at home who the coaches are, what so, they do, where, where they're from. Yeah, so we've got uh, our head coach is Matthew Weber, who yep. is a pot lad. Uh, I went to school with him, been friends with him since we were sort of six or seven Weber years of age. Weber, for those viewers at home. He played here. A, he played yeah. here as well. But he's got a famous brother. He has Rob. Rob, 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 Weber. Rob yep. currently at Sale and played, played for England. Um, the guy who's holding the ball, that's Ben Reese. He's our, he's our first team captain. He's, he's injured at the moment, but we have a, a couple of other guys that help out. A guy called Wayne Warren, yeah. who is the backs coach at the moment, who uh, played rugby for Sheffield Tigers. I think he's Sheffield Tigers' leading, right. uh, leading try scorer. So we've got a good, we've got a good nucleus and a good nucleus players. And the beauty about it is we're, we're trying and we're, and we're. There's lots of people at training and the, and the mood is, the mood's good. Yeah, Pocklin is a local side. It's great. I mean. Uh, I think Mrs. Weber does the food there, which she I'm, does. Uh, everybody said <laughs> it's the best food it is, it's it's the best in Yorkshire. Food. It is, it is. It is very good. Well, the, I think this is why we keep so many players at the club. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is good. I mean, I, I wish you, I wish you all the best today, and uh, um, you know, good luck, and Thank hopefully you you'll come out with some points. Well, yeah, and it'll be nice to get one over Gary as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. So that, so there we go. We've got, we've got a very big game for Pocklington. You know, they've. They got promoted last year. They're finding it tough, and, that, and that's we talked about that earlier. In that, you know, the the margin of error is a lot less. You know, if you drop the ball, if you spill the ball, there's turnover ball. You know, the chances are that you know you're going to get punished quite heavily. Yeah, this is a tough league uh, to stop up into from there. 
the championship winning uh, season last year. Uh, hey, that said, it, they've, got, they've, got to, they've got to perform. They're, they're in the league now. They, they've got the players they believe can do it for them. They've got to go and do it. But, but Pocklington have done really well because over the last three or four years, you know, they were in Yorkshire one. Yep. They got promoted and then got promoted again. Now they've got promoted again. You know, at some point you find your level. And, you know, I think maybe perhaps just now, um, you know, it's a good chance for Pocklington co- to consolidate, try and keep a position in this league and, and then hopefully build on the position here. Well, that's, that's their goal. Stay in this league. Keep performing and see what see what happens at the end of the season. Yeah. That's, all, that's all you can do. Okay, okay. So we're going to go for a short break now, and afterwards we'll be talking to the leading forwards try scorer Adam Atkinson. See you after the break. Right. Welcome to Camelot Cars, your local used car specialist. This is Hannah from Close Brothers Motor Finance. Last year, Close Brothers Motor Finance helped 88,000 people buy their next vehicle. All of our cars are sold with 12 months MOT and 6 months warranty. This is David from our warranty company. We manage warranty claims for thousands of dealers, not least of which is Camelot Cars. Camelot Cars, your local trusted car dealer. Purchase your dream home at the Wolds Retreat, a new residential park home for the 50s plus. Set in the beautiful Lincolnshire Wolds, a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. All homes are fully furnished and on full main services. Part Exchange welcome. To find out more, call us today on 01977 782 190 or visit greensparkhomes.co.uk. Auto Tints and Shady Days are your home and vehicle window tint specialists. With over 15 years of experience, our high-quality film applications stop glare, reduce heat, add privacy, increase safety and prevent fading throughout your car, home, shop front or conservatory. For more information, you can check out our Facebook page, visit www.autotinter.co.uk or call us on 01472 827 775. We're not your average window tinting company. Hard water doesn't just affect how your home looks. It can also affect how your appliances and central heating system works. A water softener can solve these issues. Water softeners can reduce the cost of bills, increase the lifespan of appliances, and give you softer skin and shinier hair. Installation is fast, simple, and you can start benefiting from softened water right away. Humble Water Softeners are able to give you a quick home demonstration so you can see the results for yourself. Protect your pipes and appliances today by contacting Humble Water Softeners. Come back to Hull Rugby Union where we can hear all the voices, all the anticipation, the, the aggression of all the players running about warming up. It's, it, it's not too cold today. We're not allowed to mention the cold. No, we, always say we never mention the cold ever again. No, it's a fantastic uh, day for rugby. It is, it's great. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, under underfoot it's pretty solid, but... Not, not solid enough to call the game off. But we're no. joined here by the director of rugby, Hull Rugby Union. I've worked with Gary for many years Gary. down at Hull. Yes. Yes. As the viewers will know at home, we, uh, we interviewed Gary in his, the coffee bean shop a week and a half ago, didn't we, Gary? Absolutely. Lovely cup of coffee. So, big game today for you today. If, you, if you're looking at trying to get promotion, whether it's the automatic promotion slot or uh, the playoff slot, today's a big game. And we talked about local derbies, local derbies, you can't go to form, can you? No, you can't. We've all played in plenty of games that you got. It's the side that turns up on the day. So you know we've obviously had a game off last week. They played, so you know we've had a bit of a rest. But sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not. But uh, you know we're going well. We've played well. We've been quite consistent with the team we can put out. So you know we're looking forward to the game. The lads are itching to go. So yeah, it's a. You know we've got to perform to I win the game. I can feel tension. I can feel yeah. you know the, the guys are warming up. You can just feel. The yeah. anticipation, the build-up of the game, something I miss as well. And yeah. you know, I think all of us ex-players, you know, when when you see the warm-up and you see the, all the all the aggression, the you know, it's just it's in, it's really interesting to see, isn't it? Well, you're looking at Pocklington, they've come here with nothing to lose. They're going to have a go. What, what's your predictions? Well, it's a derby game, Cass, and quite simply, yeah, they they have got nothing to lose. I mean, you know, I think it's well. So, you know they they you know they're struggling coming up. It's you know it's a it's a big step coming up from what they did. They had a great year last year, but obviously you know where we got other cha- you know other we want to be going the other direction really. So we're you know we're at the top end you know trying to cling into the one or two spots. So yeah, it's important that we you know these are the games you've got to be professional and turn up and take your chances and you know 
win the game really and get five points. That's all it is for us really. We look to win the game and then see if we can get that extra bonus point. Who are we looking for today? Which are the standout players for the whole side? Well, we've um, our, our eight job, uh, Joe Stafford, captain, carries the ball really well for us and leads us well. Um, our pack, probably underrated, do a really good job. They get us on the front foot and behind we've got really exciting back three. I think Steve Ahita has been absolutely on fire. I mean, he's broken the club record. He scored, what, 26, 28 tries now before Christmas. Uh, looking to get over 30 before Christmas, which is what we give him a target because we think he's that good. And then Mike Adelaide on the other wing, who's just come back from Dubai, where the sevens uh, team who's an ex-FC uh, prodigy uh, who's rapid and then we got Lee Bircher 15 who's quick and on this ground you know it's dry it's nice and wide pitch we look to play an expansive game so yeah we're looking forward to it really How important is it you've lost your captain uh, Tom Rice the hooker um, you know he's a former Irons player he's been like, leading the side yeah. for quite a number you know he's, he's quite an integral figurehead I suppose not starting all the time but certainly he is an important member of the team how, you know, how important is it that he's not here today? Well, yeah, he, I mean, he's got a, a, an infection on his calf, which is pretty bad. Uh, he went to A&E last night. We just took the sort of, with, with what's coming after Christmas for us, that we didn't want to take any chances, giving him a bit of time to clear it up before we start the new year. But no, we've, uh, Jubbers has come in and Jubbers has played all year. We, we look, you know, we have two hookers at the club and we have to make sure we rotate them. Mm. They're both quality players. Yeah, Ricey is a captain, but we, you know, we got quite a few captains on the side. Our side's been together a few years now. So they're, you know, they're quite used to that. And these, you know, it's no different for us. We're mm. quite happy. Jubbers will come in and he's an outstanding player himself. So we have no problems. Gary, all the best today. Hey, thanks. Best sis. of luck. Yeah. Thanks best very much. Luck. Thanks, Cass. Good luck. We'll We're going to bring in very quickly Adam Atkinson. We've only got a very short period of time. Adam. Hello. Can I see you? Adam, so, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Good to see you again. Top try scorer for the forwards. Yes. At Hull Rugby Union. In these days here. Yeah, I, I scored a few myself, didn't I? <laughs> Did he? <laughs> so we moved Adam from the back row, moving into the front row, where, the, where proper rugby should be played. Obviously retired now. Do you miss it? Oh, hell of a lot, sir. Cassie, yeah, big time. You know, looking lads warming up now. Yeah, you know, it is. I think this is what we, we were talking about this, how much we miss the, you know, getting together, the getting into the changing rooms, all, you know, that camaraderie that you have that nobody else can be part of. And, you know, being in that 15 during the, during the match day is exactly what you want to be in. Don't, yeah. You don't want to be stood out here with a microphone in your hand or be a spectator. You want to be actually in there with your kit on, joining all the lads, don't you? Definitely, sir, definitely. I mean, when I, when I was down here playing myself... Um, Coach Gibbs on the way back after a good win. He's yeah. Honest, that bus in be. You got you got memories there you'll have forever. Yeah, exactly. Ever. Friends, coaches, you know, yeah. you'll, always, yeah. you'll always have. Well, you make friends for life. That's what rugby's all about. Yep. We talked on it early on, talking uh, over some lunch, didn't we? Yeah. We were saying what uh, what a fantastic uh, game it is for ethic, moral attitude of the players. It is. And it, it never leaves you. No, not at all. It's you get the game respect, everything like you know, you know, you've got friends for life when you're on that pitch. I used to say when I played, you know, when you're on this park, these easier, easy, this is your family, and it carries on after rugby. You know, with the, in, where things change in your life after rugby, on you know, rugby friends will always be there. That's right. Right. He's a passionate man, is Adam. He's an absolute passionate man, and, and I know how much it means to him to like come here and talk to us about rugby and you know, talk about. How many tries did you get then, anyway? Because we, talk, we brought you on to talk about your tries. Oh, I, think right. I, was, I think it was 52 tries in 112 What do you 112 mean, do you, mean think, you think? 52. 112 He's been periods. talking about it all T- day. Totally how many tries try, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, mind you, when it was 10 yards out, I did call the line out and they knew what the call was. Nine four doors, I think you'll have to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was it. I mean, for, for those of you at home, I mean, I'm not saying that Adam is slow. He's not slow, but um, <laughs> he didn't have to sidestep <laughs> people. He didn't have to run a long way. Basically, he chucked and trailer. And um, he managed to flop over the line, I think we could call it <laughs> flop, could we not? Just about, yeah. I think I had a few for five yards. Right? So you've been through the wars over recently. I mean, uh, I don't want to put any young players off, but I mean, Adam is an exception to the rule. Um, you know, he's cost the NHS quite a bit of money. <laughs> but you've been through a few operations, haven't you, mate? Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, um, I remember when I was about 19, 20 playing, and the older guys just said to me, you carry on playing like that, you'll, be, you'll, le- le- you'll know later on in life and I used to push it off. I know what they're on about now. Yeah, so just to, to talk to us, uh, so the, your knee, your last last game at Hellenzian's, your knee um, bent in half? And, yep, yep, snapped. snapped my ACLP, so lateral medial. Right, in, uh, just for those of you at home, uh, that's something to do with your knee, <laughs> it's hurt his knee, badly. <laughs> yeah, I ended up for an ambulance on that one, and uh, 
And they have had a few, fair few injuries, I think. They've yeah. got, what, 15 operations are up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as I say, you, you can't substitute the fact that, I mean, I know you, you, you're walking wounded, you hopefully you will repair, but the fact is that you've had so many extremely enjoyable years playing rugby. Oh, you've got so fantastic friends. Thing. That's the question always. Would you change it? No, never. Never, no, never, never. Do you wish you'd have played rugby, Cass? Oh, many times I thought, uh, why am I playing rugby? That's the question <laughs> I asked myself, not what I did. Um, but you have to know when to stop. And your body tells you, and yeah. I think you have to take that uh, that on board. A lot but of your, body's say, your body's saying yes, and your man's saying no still when you have. That's the thing, is that I think you, you still think you can play. You still think you can play. You pull your boots off, and, and when you actually you're making noises, fastening your shoelaces, I think then you know <laughs> it's probably time to finish playing rugby. So when you have yeah. to put your socks on the night before, when you go, before you go to bed, and you can't do it in the morning. I do remember. I do remember when I was playing, and it, it was the following Friday after the Saturday I'd played. I was still injured from the Friday, so <laughs> that's the problem. That is the problem, isn't it? It is. And, uh, the thing is, I call it Peter Pan syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> you never grow up. You never. You don't want to stop doing what you do. No. Cassie's never grown up. <laughs> never. So you won't grow up, though, will you? No. Why? So I'm going to ask everybody whilst we're on camera now. How much homework have you done for the game today? For today's match. Yes. I've done so much. You'd be incredibly proud of me. Okay. I'm, so I'm, let's. I'm on the ball. I've got all the names written down on your pad for you. <laughs> so we're, here. we're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> So just just going back to the game on a more of a serious note, uh, uh, Adam, um, who do you think is going to win today? Well, actually, I think it's a foregone conclusion. I mean, it's a local derby. You can talk about it being a local derby. Your form goes out the window. For me, Hull are going to win all day long, but it's about how many? Well, I think they'll beat about 40 points. Today. You think I so? Think They're think at home. Understand. They've done really well. You know, they are really hard to break down at home. And look at some of the players. They really, they're really are focused. Yep. So... We're going to go to a quick break, but all the action starts after the break. Stay tuned, put the kettle on, come straight back. See you after the break. Welcome to Camelot Cars, your local used car specialist. This is Hannah from Close Brothers Motor Finance. Last year, Close Brothers Motor Finance helped 88,000 people buy their next vehicle. All of our cars are sold with 12 months MOT and 6 months warranty. This is David from our warranty company. We manage warranty claims for thousands of dealers, not least of which is Camelot Cars. Camelot Cars, your local trusted car dealer. Purchase your dream home at the Wolds Retreat, a new residential park home for the 50s plus. Set in the beautiful Lincolnshire Wolds, a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. All homes are fully furnished and on full main services. Part Exchange Welcome. To find out more, call us today on 01977 782 190 or visit greensparkhomes.co.uk. Auto Tints and Shady Days are your home and vehicle window tint specialists. With over 15 years of experience, our high quality film applications stop glare, reduce heat, add privacy, increase safety, and prevent fading throughout your car, home, shop front, or conservatory. For more information, you can check out our Facebook page, visit www.autotinter.co.uk, or call us on 01472 827 775. We're not your average window tinting company. Hard water doesn't just affect how your home looks. It can also affect how your appliances and central heating system works. A water softener can solve these issues. Water softeners can reduce the cost of bills, increase the lifespan of appliances, and give you softer skin and shinier hair. Installation is fast, simple, and you can start benefiting from softened water right away. Humble Water Softeners are able to give you a quick home demonstration so you can see the results for yourself. Protect your pipes and appliances today by contacting Humble Water Softeners. Out, dipping slightly. Yeah, teams are out warming up. Yep, absolutely. So he's a good lad, Adam, isn't he? He's—you uh, can tell—he's completely passionate about rugby, and uh, 
Um, his body's paying the price now, poor kid. <laughs> Bless his heart. I can say that, uh, safely say, Terry, that uh, there, for the grace of God, goes many rugby player who plays too much, too long. What are you talking about? You just got to know when to stop. Yeah, I suppose you yeah. do. And, 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 and as I said before, it, um, it's great playing when you when you've got the, the time to do it, the ability to do it. But um, you, you, you know, you suffer at the end of it if you don't uh, take care of yourself. That's the thing is that you have to you have to um, look after your body. And uh, just going back to the RFU and what they're doing to players now in relation to um, the head injury assessment, and we'll just talk about that very quickly. Okay. I think it is important to uh, it is important to make sure that the players are right. And sometimes, I mean, myself included, you would you know you'd have a knock on the head and you'd want to play on. But I think it's important that the RFU do look after the players because you know you're in this sort of competitive um, arena and you want to carry on. And the the thing is that if you're not uh, looked after, then you just continue to play and c- continue to get knocks on the head. Well, the protocol they brought in. Um, into the game for head assessments and injuries um, anything to do with that sort of area uh, are, w- are well needed and uh, I think most of the players appreciate that now that they're from the top to the very uh, bottom of the game uh, from you know, junior rugby I'm talking about they, mm. they, they are looked after a lot better yeah. than we ever were well look at this too I know, I know you look back <laughs> and think what happened to our, our brain but yeah. I, I, on, on another note with I was talking to um, uh, an ex-professional rugby player the other day, and um, you talk to everybody. I do everybody, um, and he played uh, rugby league for many years in, uh, at the Super League level. And um, a lad called Kirk, Kirk Dixon, you know Kirk. Yeah. And uh, Kirk was saying that he's since he's retired from playing, he, he's and he struggled a little bit with um, the aftermath of, of uh, being professional. Um, he was saying to me that uh, um, all he had to do on a Monday morning was pick his kit and boots up and in his bag and off he went and now he, and he's, he's working in his uh, family business but um, he said so many of the players who, who he knows who've retired uh, it'd be the same in Union as well um, a, a, a bit lost after, after that um, yeah. buzz of playing um, and training and, and being part of a, a team where everything's looked after you've done everything for you you, you need to be there at this time finish at that time and suddenly it's all gone and you've got to start making your own way in the world in terms of work and career and outside of that comfort zone and that, that's that's a tough thing to to cope sometimes how did how you find that yeah i think it is difficult it is absolutely difficult to uh, to you know not just not just at, at, at international level or premiership level but even playing at this sort of level you know you've got these guys you've seen them on the tuesday night you've seen them thursday night you've You've got the banter and you're playing Saturday. You, you've got the highs and lows, highs of winning and lows of, you know, losses. And, you know, you come to the end of the career and, and you find yourself basically on the scrap heap, you know. And you're still loved by everybody. <laughs> you, um, were, you were the scrap heap, yeah. Uh, I was, yeah. <laughs> but not, not as early as what you were. But what I'm saying is, you know, you're not part of that in the sense, you're not part of that circle. And it's, in, you know, it's incredibly difficult to, um, to accept the fact that you're not part of that circle. Well, I guess that um, at the lower leagues, or well, the leagues you come down from that uh, high school or international premiership into um, uh, more social rugby. But it's still, when you, when you stop playing, it is hard to, to find something else to replace that. I found that. Yeah. You can, there's always the refereeing, like you, you went into, and there's uh, coaching yeah. that I've gone into, but um, it still doesn't replace that, uh, that family spirit you had when it was a player. Yeah. I don't think. Just looking at the uh, the whole players here warming up, you know, Gary Pierce, he, he's he's really organised. He has the he has the forwards doing their jobs. He's got the backs doing their jobs, and you know, he's he's a great believer in getting quality ball for his backs. But once the backs have the ball, they have got pace, energy, enthusiasm, and you know, there is a trademark stamp with Gary's with Gary's sides, aren't there? Well, how he played the game when he played at Rugby Union. He, uh, Wales number 10, Nathan number 10. Uh, he didn't want to be bogged down in the, in the forward back. He wanted the ball in his hands, didn't he? He wanted to play expansive rugby. Yeah, he does, he does shout and ball. He does sort of knock them into shape. It's, it does Martin uh, Weatherdale there, his assistant, who helps him with the forwards. But again, it's 
Again, all this, the preparation, you know, for the viewers at home, for people who've not played rugby, this is an integral part of it. You know, you're going through your running lines and things that you've done on a Thursday night, on the team run, and done a few bits and bobs on a Tuesday. This, this is where you know it all, all the focus, all the energy, you know, all the direction is is basically going to be on the next 80 minutes. If we just have a look at the the league tables. Yeah, we can see where where um, Ionian is sitting in the, in the National One Division. Uh, they're playing down at uh, Amptill today. Before that game's on, um, uh, their game last week was called off. Um, they were due to play Rosslyn Park. Um, but that, was, that was that was would have been a really tough game for us going down there against Roslyn Park, fourteenth. You know, I just think. Had they played that game last week, the, the, you know, two losses on the bounce, it would have been quite difficult. It, it, to it's, it, it's a, we know, that's, a, that's a tough league, uh, the national one, whichever ever, um, side you're playing in that league. Mm. It's going to be. But um, Let's have a look at this league. This is, the, this is where we're, we're playing today. We're Hull sitting third there on 48 points, just behind Lim. It's tight. You see, the thing is, for me, you know, you look at the top, it, it's, it's really tight. You know, you've got the three, one, two and three. Preston, Lim and Hull. Very close. Looks as though Preston, provided that they don't have any hiccups. I mean, obviously he'll have to play Preston, but you know, you look at the bottom. You know, Morley, Pocklington, Birkenhead Park. Those three, are, you know, that you can see they're they're going to be struggling, aren't they? They are, as we said to um, to the Pock Poc, um, director of rugby. Um, yeah, to consolidate this year in this league, if they could stay in this league this year, it'd be a great achievement. Yeah. Uh, but Hull, they're a different mental state they're looking for that second position obviously um, if they can win today that puts them uh, uh, in a stronger position I mean Hull, Hull have done particularly well over the years they, I mean they started well below uh, Yorkshire 1 they've gone through the ranks really well they've found the level I think they, they sort of trumped Ionians they were the, the senior side of the area for a season um, and then obviously Ionians came up and there was that fantastic sort of local derby Hull Ionians versus Hull which was fantastic to be involved in fa fantastic to see but obviously we, we're not having that at the moment Ionians are um, in the national uh, national one but um, it'd be nice to see uh, it'd be nice to see that uh, that competition again between the two clubs yeah me personally I'd love to see the, the two teams um, going head to head yeah, it, uh, it gives the local rugby uh, a focus. Mm. Um, I like to see the other local sides um, doing well, including Hallensians uh, and Beverley, Brid, Driffield. It's great to see that uh, they're all having a uh, re resurgence. Should we say. Talking about Brid, we've got that big game today, Brid and Drift. I mean, that is going to be. I mean, I'm not sure whether it's on. Is it? Is it going to be on? I don't know whether whether up in the. I'll have to if if you know, if you know at all, just um, tweet us in. But if if Driffield Brillington's on and we want the score because that is going to be a big big game today. Well, it's again, it's anyone's call. You asked me on uh, during the week what I thought, and I said yeah. Driffield will pinch it. And no, you didn't. You said you couldn't call it. I thought, what's the point <laughs> yeah. getting you on the show if you're not going to commit yourself? <laughs> and the, 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 the Bridlington coach got hold of me on Thursday. So what, are, what are you talking about? <laughs> what am I talking about? Oh, well, I Cookie, he's doing a good job down at Brid, isn't he? Oh, fantastic. <clears throat> uh, and look, Brid, Drift, um, real local rivalry there, local, massive local derby. Um, bragging rights are absolutely everything. But also, um, any one of those top five teams can, can be um, uh, up there. Yeah. yeah, with a win, they're, they're, they're in. Uh, just one quick word for um, our cameraman Brian at home. Uh, we're managing to Afternoon, Brian. managing to survive without you. I hope you're getting better after your bout of man flu. Um, but we are coping quite well. We're not standing in each other's shadow, so we're doing all right. But thanks. I hope you uh, recover very quickly. Yeah, serious illness. Man flu for those views at home. Um, yeah. It's not very nice. Yeah. But the. Uh, the pot guys are making their way in now. There's a bit of an issue about what time the kickoff was. Uh, in they've put it back slightly. Um, ten past, I hear. Um, which still it does make a big difference, doesn't it? Does it? Well, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> I'm just thinking for the for the, the the light, but we should be okay. We should exactly. be okay. Well, that, uh, that, that sun's gone down a bit. That makes it 
Some interesting news, though, Ian. I've got some interesting news for you because you've not been doing your homework, and I have. I have got some interesting news. That's good news. Do you know what it is? No, but tell me. Okay, so where, where on earth, in, in, Premiership, uh, in Premiership North Rugby, would you have uh, an injury to, uh, to one of the players and the Pocklington side have to go into the bar to drag somebody out to play? <laughs> Today, <laughs> which is what's going to happen this <laughs> afternoon, onto the bench, not so, to play. No, no, to play. Will Norris uh, is now going to be playing. Who's actually just finishing his pint, I think. And uh, this is local and grassroots rugby and gentleman. Pie. <laughs> and um, yeah, and Ewan Walker, um, the tight head for Pocklington, has pulled a fetlock. Um, so Will Norris uh, is going to be taking his position at the tight head for Pocklington. Now that is a story, isn't it? It is, especially when it was a nice. Nice beer, yeah, and a nice pie. And so, someone said, "Come on, put it down." <laughs> but it, it, at least it's not, it's not that cold at the moment, is it? So you wouldn't mind too much. Having said that, you know, it, I, I would suggest perhaps Adam being in the physical state. If somebody turned around to him this afternoon and said, "Adam, you're on," he would certainly <laughs> he'd pull his he'd pull his shorts on and have a run about, wouldn't he, poor kid? But yeah, uh, yeah for those viewers at home, we have. Um, Somebody who's just sinking his pint, finishing off, um, but playing for Pocklington in this um, in this Premiership North side um, game between Hull and Pocklington. We've got Mr. Norris, Will Norris, who's going to be taking the place of um, Ewan Walker, who has pulled a fetlock. What, what, what is? How do you pull a fetlock? I don't know what a fetlock is. <laughs> he said he's pulled a fetlock. <laughs> He pulled a hamstring. I mean, I I what it is, it makes a very good word in Scrabble. That's what it does. <laughs> is there such a word? Let's have a look at the Yorkshire One League table. Yep. Let's have a look at it again. This oh, is no, we haven't seen this, this, this where, one. Um, Beverly a third. They're doing quite well, aren't they? Beverly Scarborough. Well, we, 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 we covered that game. We covered that game, didn't we? And it, that defies what we saw in the day, didn't, doesn't it? Well, Scarborough actually won that game uh, well. Yeah, That's and Scarborough. The, but the, you know, you got Beverly. It depends if Beverly have been playing Selby, Wheatley Hills, North Ribblesdale, and Brother Salem. Yeah, then, then you'd understand why they're in that position. But um, it w- very disappointing for Beverly that day. I thought. Yeah, that they they, um, they they struggled against a, a heavy Scarborough pack on a very cold, cold day. <laughs> <It> Scarborough. <was. laughs> um, hey, but look, they're, they're up there. They're, you know, lying third and fourth behind York, who were. We're pushing ahead with that league, mm. uh, but Hallensians in there fighting still. I like to see um, Hallensians consolidate this year, yeah. stay in there. I think they will. So just looking at the uh, the whole team, we'll just um, just very quickly talk about the inside centre. What can you tell me about the inside centre, Ian? Have you done your homework? That, of course, I have. Um, talk to me about him. <laughs> Apparently, he's the leading try scorer. <laughs> yes, he is. And he's scored twenty seven tries this season so far. So, so again, far. he is. Yeah, he's from um, he's from Fiji. He's a Fijian guy, and uh, he's, he's a utility back. But he's been he's been doing particularly well playing for Hull. He's broken uh, the try scoring record here. Yeah, well, actually, I think Gary's true? wrong because um, he's got it, it's Haita that's uh, that's on twenty four tries, and he needs to to um, and he's a Romanian guy, and he needs to score two more tries in order to beat or equal Leroy McKenzie's twenty six tries in a season. In a season. So, do you remember Leroy McKenzie? What a player! He, he what was a player. He, he was, was rapid. rapid. <laughs> 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 Well, anything quicker than us two is rapid <laughs> anyway, isn't it? A snail. <laughs> He's rapid confetti. He man. was rapid. He was like a racehorse. Well. He was. He was like, he wasn't built like me and you, was he? Eh? No, he was built for speed. He was built for speed. But there again, he was strong as well. He was. And he could <laughs> oh, sing. He, he could do everything. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Lee, Leroy McKenzie, the former Hull FC winger, who used to play at Coventry, played mm. England 21s. Um his 26 try record is in danger. Well, it will be in danger because you'd like to think that Hayat is going to be scoring two tries before the end of the season. What was your biggest try tally in the season, Tony? Um, let's have a think now. Let's have a t- let me count them up. You think you got sent off no, more no, than, no, than no, scored tries? I'm just counting up. Uh, <laughs> one try. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> It wasn't about scoring tries for me. It was about making them, setting the platform course, for the for the future. Course. But um, yeah, I do I do remember actually scoring two tries in one game. 
Do you? Yeah, I do. I do. And I'm what, was that a touch game? No, no. no it's, it was. It was. It was. Um, it was playing for Wakefield, and uh, and the story was that I was going in for a, a, a hat trick. I went for the dive and I dropped the ball, so I didn't get a hat trick. Really? No. That's that was the story. Slightly <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you live. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we've got uh, Thomas uh, telling me who's playing in the centre, who's for Gene born. He is all for Jeans. I've got this ability to be very, very light and flat. You catch people flat-footed, don't they? Well, it's dry, it's cold, but it's built for pace. It would be that pitch that's in good condition now. Yeah. So I'm expecting Hull yeah. to throw this ball about and really mm. put pressure. Well, here comes uh, here comes Pocklington. Yeah. So um, today's referee as well is Adam Morrison from Yarm, is a history teacher at school Yarm. I think we're having a minute silence before kickoff um, today, um, um, in honour of um, uh, one of the whole players' fathers who passed away, uh, a stalwart of the club. So we'll uh, have that. Uh, that have you got the ability? Respect. Have you got the ability to? Be quiet for a minute. Let's just wait for the whole place to come out. Are the whole place going to come out? I think there will be in a minute or two. Yeah, come on, Hull is the shout from the Pocklington players. The thing is, that's all a game, but with Gary, it is mind games, isn't he? He does play these mind games, doesn't he? As all players come out. So if you're at home, Tom Rice, I hope your uh, infection in your calf's getting better. I'm sorry you're not down here. The whole captain currently recovering after a visit in A&A. But let's have a minute silence as the referee will blow his whistle. Cassie, it means silent. Here we go. There we go, that's the mid referee there, Adam Morrison, making a sly look at his watch. But that was a that was like a, a scene out of Crime Watch, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> right, here we go. This is a big main event. Terry. This is it. This is this is what it's all about. This is why we get up in the morning. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, to to be to be fair. Here we go. Pop to take the the drop. Okay. Pollock to start this game off as Adam Morrison, the referee, signals for the start of the game. Take it in. Hold number five. Good tackle there by Fothergill. It's the gar side. Talk by the referee there, telling the Pocklington players to get on the back foot. Whole forwards was working the way out of the red 25. So they're working well in the pods of the whole players. Somebody boshing the referee out of the way. Harding just chips forward, looking for the quick box. Well but taken. Good chase. Good take. Well take by Albra there. Was. Davison feeds his open side Jackson he's been playing well as Jackson actually well, 
And it's Pop looking to move it wide quickly. Good defence, good line yeah. speed by Hull though, isn't it? They've not really made any inroads, Pocklington. A bit Say isolated again, there. He is. Say, Morton. Good defence by Hull. Strong carry. Those of you at home, number three, Norris, is the late replacement for Walker. There he is at the back. <laughs> he was here just to watch the game, poor kid. Look, he had his boots with him, Terry. Yeah, exactly. That's good defence by Amber. Looked a bit forward that, but taking him Flat by Hull best. again. The freeze is played on. Davison shouting instructions for feeds his Pollock, his 10. Looking to move the ball wide. Yeah, just drifted a bit too much across the field as Flint takes it on, manages to stay on his feet. Still no way through. Holbert manages just to make some inroads there. Strong carry. Fothergill drives it on. Good ball retention. Davison feeds Pollock. Again, it's just behind the game line, but well played there by Hardy. He's taking him on. Good defence by the hole. Yeah, they've made they've made Hull no ground line. at all, have they? So yeah. there's a penalty advantage here. Referee signalling Hull offside. We're playing advantage, but Pocklington still playing there is a penalty. There's no advantage there. No, first penalty of the game. I, I saw that. Adam uh, Morrison there, there was a, there was a, a suspicious tip tackle in, in the centre play there. I don't know if we saw it. Well, just just at that point there, a tip tackle. Yeah, his legs went through the. Oh, didn't didn't find touch, but I think he's knocked it on. The referee's playing yeah, he's on at the moment. Used his feet there. That's great step Play in on, there yes. by Birch. He's he's light on his feet. He's Birch. We are related in some way, in some form, Birch. Ah, oh, yeah. Pocket will be annoyed with that there too, not finding touch. Yeah, his Cardinals yeah, are well played. You have to, you have to get it's your It's a strong cage, drove it on there, good leg speed. Um, and there's the first penalty see, of the hole. for me, I mean, OK, I, why not try them, why not test them? You know, Harding's looking around, bossing, you know, clapping his hands. But, you know, why not test them early on, quick tap? Because Pocklington were not ready... Against the broken defence, that's the best time to attack. Johnson kicks for touch. Yeah, good deep kick. Good deep kick. Just, touch just underneath us now. So, referee Adam Morrison, as I said, is a history teacher. If he'd have read the history books, he'd have known that Hull won the last encounter 30 points to nail at Pocklington. They did. So it's Michael Joplin to uh, to take the line. He look, he's got a neck like yours, Ian. Has he? Yeah. He's got more hair than I. Have. It's not difficult. <laughs> so Hull have shortened the line. Pocklington looking to try and disrupt this. Good movement in the line from Hull. Well taken. Yeah. Joblin takes the throw well. Oh, disrupting by the... Pulls at the back there. By but the, by the pop forward, they've got the hands on the ball yeah, there. Yeah, the oh, well played. Stafford away. drives it on. Wanted to take it on again. It's like Harding's barking instructions. The scrum half saying, take it on. He doesn't want it. Take it on again by Regasso. Still calling for it. See, the forwards are taking the pounding at the moment, just trying to tire the puckling defence out. Just uh, Now's the time to spread it wide. Now's the time we see the hullbacks just open their legs and they're just... First time they've got it and the first oh, time they score. Finish. Absolutely fantastic play by Hull. Yes, Referee says that. yes. It took a long time to say yes, he but did. I mean, that is the first time that Hull backs have had the ball... At all, never mind in space, and that is the first time that the Pocklington defence has been breached, and that looked too easy. It did, it did. It was a strong finish. It was just straight hands, too. wasn't it? The forwards took it on three times, good ball retention. Harding feeds 
Johnson, Johnson to Numi, passes on to Hurd, and then we just straight walk in into the corner. Five points to nil to Hull. It's only six minutes gone. It's going to be it's going to be hard work for Pocklington, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Um, look, they're going to roll the sleeves up and get stuck in. The, the missing touch with the penalty doesn't help. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You 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 know you pointed that out as a cardinal sin. You cannot cannot miss touch for the forwards for their psychological well-being. You cannot miss touch. This here we go. Look, forward are driving it in. Great play. You've got quick recycle. Harding to Johnson offloads. Just simple to hands. Me. Simple hands. Birch just feeds. Haita. He only needs one more try now to beat. Leroy McKenzie's record. He's a big lad, strong runner. And he's got the kick yeah, as well. Good kick. Just good to touch. add a bit more salt into the wound for Pocklington. They're uphill all the way today, aren't they? There's the sun beats straight down into the ground. Pocklington are looking straight on into the abyss at the moment. They're not they're not gonna be they're not going to be enjoying the next 30 minutes of this game, I can tell you now. Well, it's going to be hard work for them. This is where they have to build, Terry. It's character. It's how they respond, as you know. So Hull strong again, carry, good, yeah. good strong it's carry. He's like but breaking harding that feeds. Line. It's all about getting momentum on Johnson's that Johnson's looking Terry. to step. And they're, and they're, they're doing it at the moment pretty easily yeah Harding feeds his donkeys again look you see they're just taking all the pressure off the backs the line speed of the pot boys has to be quicker than this that so first they're just, tackle has they, to be strong they are they're going up they're, they're going up in in ones and twos it'll just allow that space that whole desire just to allow their backs to be able to give them that space to create the overlap He's well, done quite a bit of work as Dias there, the, the prop from Rotherham, who's it initially at Rotherham, he was, now at Hull. He, he came from Ionian as well, I see how he yep. was playing there. That was offside. Came off his own man. You have to be in an onside position. The Pocklington centre, Hardy, was in an offside position. It's so difficult not to pick the ball up. You have to be really well disciplined not to just instinctively pick that ball up. You'd pick it up, though, wouldn't you? I would have if you were there. I would have done. As Hull again. Oh, he's missed touch. He's, he's sliced that. Um, that's called his mark. For the corner again. Flint called the mark, feeds it, gives him a better angle, and he misses the touch. But the Harding lead. passes inside. Long pass. It looks quite dangerous. This as well, but the way that they always look like Harding offloads. Hits his fullback Birch into a bit of space. It's quick recycle ball there, Terry. They're it moving is. it quickly through the hands. Probing. Looking for that, that gap in the middle backs. It's another strong carry. He is, he's playing well. He just managed to knock it on there, did he not? Finding a prop out in the middle there. It's hard to stop a prop running at you in the centre. It is, it's asking a lot of the defence. What they're doing, it's a really intelligent play from Hull. They're managing to recycle the ball and put some big boys in against poor old Pollock, who's having to tackle some 18 stone, 19 stone boys running on the hoof, as they say. It must be, you know, it's, we're only, poor old kid, 10 minutes into the game and he's already made 12 tackles and these big boys that are running. I mean, it's it's going to find it hard work it's all day long. long afternoon. As Davidson, the number 20 for uh, Pocklington, feeds the scrum. The reason why he's wearing 20, the normal scrum half, is a big lad. So the number nine shirt's quite big, so he doesn't fit this poor old Davidson who's a little bit slightly built. Good scrum though by Pock. Yeah, that's the first scrum. Yep. That's a that bit more piece, pace. Though. That was asking more yeah. questions when Hurd was driving in there, the England Counties player last year. So they've got some quality of Pocklington. It's about making well, sure they get the quality ball that they need from the forwards. I have not any doubt about that. Last season they came up as champions. Oh, it's, no, it's a turnover ball. This is where oh, Hull are yeah. dangerous. Broken play. The, the, they've got the ability, as we can see this here. Is this is what this play. is what they have. This, this is like this is uh, Hayata. He oh. has got now the record 
equaling try to equal Leroy McKenzie. Now, I said, as soon as Hull get turnover ball, they look really, really dangerous. And and it's just proved it there, Ian, haven't they? He made that look, look easy, at this. but it look, wasn't easy. Knock, it knocks on, great tackle. Pick up. Look at this, look at this leg that speed. Was wasn't it held? Here we go. Picks and goes. Watch this One leg speed. Tackle, Drives it tackle, through. Three tackles. You have to make those tackles, though, don't you? I mean, strong, nice dive strong, at the end. Gary. Fortunately, he didn't drop it. But Gary Pierce was saying, watch this guy. Watch this guy. Watch his hiatus. He needs two more. Tra- He's from Romania. Had a bit of a, a, a problem with uh, language. Stayed. At, he's been at Hull for quite some time now. He's now 26 tries. It equals Leroy McKenzie's all-time record. And we're not even halfway through the season. Are we? We're just halfway through the season. He's going to score a few tries, isn't oh, he? He's going to score a lot more than the... Well, if it's tackling like that, if it's tackling like that, so 12 points to nil, Haita goes in for his second as we watch for the kick to make it 14 points to nil. No. Not that time. No. So it stays at 12 points to nil, 12 minutes gone, point a minute. So Haita scores at 5 minutes and he scores at 12 minutes. I hope for Pocklington's sake that scoring regime does slow down for Pocklington's sake. Because it's quite disheartening, isn't it, when you come off the back of a huge loss. Pollock kicks. Nobody really claiming it from Hull there. Not forward by Gary's not going to be too advantage. happy with that. Nobody's coming. OK, so we've got our second scrum now. There's Adam Morrison... Mr. Morrison takes them back to the point where the knock-on was. Knock-on by Pocklington first by the looks of it. So Hull have the scrum. This is the first scrum for Hull. And this is a good test to see how uh, Hull's scrum is on their own ball. Because effectively what you've got, you've got seven players pushing against the eight because the hooker is not in a position to push because he's ordinarily striking the ball in. Well, any front row player can strike the ball this season, Terry. Well, I'm pleased I'm not playing anymore. I get, they get a kick in the shin. Did you ever strike it before? I'm not playing. No. Okay, so Harding to put the ball in. That's a good. That's a good scrum. Yes, powerful s- strong. Foodster. Good platform. Johnson. Looking to move that ball every opportunity this, uh, wide. Yeah, and there he goes again. He's he's a he's having a field out at the moment. Oh, oh my that's word. too strong. That is it. That is it. You could, they're going to have to. Hull are going to have to take him off. They're going to have to <laughs> take him it. off and give Pocklin to the <laughs> That's not fair. The crowd are shouting. Oh, he is quality. He is quality. He's, he's incredible, though, isn't he? <sighs> that is a. That was a strong. Look at this. Look at this. Run. I mean, he's got pace. He beats his first man. Fifteen should make a better effort. He didn't square him off. You can see the resignation on. Number 11, Flint's face. I guess that, that shows that the, the class between the top and the, and the bottom of this league, I guess, Terry. In, in, I, in I, think, yeah, there. I think it also shows. Look at the speed of this. Look, show him go, and he just goes in the corner. I mean, even, even, when, even when Herd was pushing Flint along, Flint still couldn't catch him. <laughs> there he is. He's a Romanian international. Is that a hat trick? Yes, it is indeed. Already? We're only... 15 minutes in as Hull look to stretch the lead by two more. What would you be saying to the pock side, Terry, if you were coaching them? Bring some more players on. Let's play with 19. Hmm. It's a good kick. It looks good. No. It's just drifted just point wide. To, to the left there. Which way? It depends if you're looking at it from this side or that side. From his left. <laughs> I thought you didn't know you're left from your right there, Ian. You've had too many knocks on the head. What's the score, Terry? <laughs> the score's on the board. 17 points hole. 15, point, 15 minutes into the game. As Pocklington get to their usual positions. At the moment. They need to get Flint's the ball. They need, to, they need hands on the ball, well Terry, to, 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 you to create some play. But the difficulty is that if Hull start scoring at will like this, then I think Hull will lose their their 
pattern. Everybody will want to score. You get white line fever, and then the game becomes a bit of a you know a bit of a scrap. But if they stick to their game plan, that was cr- that was in that, obstruction that, that there. Was you had yeah. K running in front of his Johnson. Well, what do you do? Take the points, Terry. I go for the corner. Oh, you Thoughts can't nil. You can't get nilled again. Surely they have to. I, I, me personally, it's like. Yeah, I'd go for the corner then. No, I would, I would actually try and get three points <laughs> on the ball so you won't end up with a zero. Well, no, but I, listen, I, I, I this is good. I, I mean, disagree. we haven't yeah. seen Pocklington's line-up. We haven't seen their catch and drive. No, they, they need to build they some pressure. They want some ball. Yeah. They've got a chance to play price and pressure now. This is their first yeah. line-up. It, it's a, it's, a, it's um, a confidence. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I know. As Birch looks to throw... Hold not, not competing at the line there. It's a good drive, well tidied. You got the Jobley, sorry, you've got Norris at the back. Yeah, they've, they've pulled it to the back. They're going for it. It's, like it's a poor. A good drive by Pock. It's poor defence by Hull, really. It's a bit slack. But it, they seem to be really well still drilled. Going forward. Pocklington, they are, they are driving for the line. They're looking pretty confident. They're One more. Yes, that is a try. That is a try, referee. That is a no, try. He's called it held up. <laughs> nice. If we have a look at that again, I'm telling you, that did look like a try. And it was our man, Mr. Norris, who only half an hour ago was having a pint in the bar. And they denied him? Yeah, where, where? I think where? so. Hey, listen, Can we see who, are we to argue? who are we to argue with the referee? We couldn't, we couldn't see from that. The angle. referee can't go upstairs. From that but angle, if we, better? If we have a look at this angle. Oh, I think it was. He did, he did get it down. Yeah. Flint sl- smashes his hand on the ground. Yeah. If you look at it. Well, scrum down, pock ball. Yeah, so it wasn't a bad call after all, but they didn't score. The referee says no. Scrum Pocklington as Davidson looks to put the ball in. On his heels there, harding the scrum half from Hull. up in the front row referee seems to have a quick word sorts them out there's no excuses about slipping in this on this pitch and it's it's it, the quality of the uh, the pitch is, is incredible first class uh, surface to play so Pollock Davison to put the ball in it's a good it's strong scrum. scrum it's steady look at that second effort now oh. the ball's come loose Pick up and go, brother. Pock eight, old brow. And again, Jackson twisting and turning, finding his way through. He's a strong seven, is the uh, open side from Pocklington. The back row, Durkin drives it on. It's a good interplay by the Pocklington backs. Back, back three. Again, Jackson takes it on. They're taking a lot of responsibility to the back row. Again, the forwards keeping it tight. They've taken a leaf out of Hulls, but, but the whole defence there was really good, driving them back. Yeah. Norris takes them on. I say that the, the defence from Hulls is particularly good there, but the, it is a bit quick pick and go from They're inching their way. Pocklington. They are making some ground, and then they that just get repelled me, right at the end. That was good defence, great good defense. driving back by the scrum half Harding. Showed a lot of strength for a back. Morton drives it on. Penalty, penalty advantage. And, and a try. A pick and go. Just From dipped Holbrow. under Stafford. Just being a bit of a spectator. Holborough manages to just sneak over. That looked like one of your tries, Ian, where you just flop over. But, I mean, they all count. They all do count. And he just here we are. Just have a look at this again. The forwards from Pock just driving it, keeping that, it tight. Hold, but it's very slack defence from Hull. That will give um, Pockington a lot, a lot of confidence. Though. Look, just look, look at this. Where is the guard man? Where is the yeah. guard man? They know they can um, they can match them in, in those tight areas. They'll look to try and keep it more tight. I'm, I'm sure this next twenty minutes, um, and not give Hull too much uh, possession out wide, because. Um, they needed that. They needed to score there, Terry. They need to get some. Um, Seventeen-five. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen. Maybe I called it too early. Maybe I called it too early. 
maybe it's not going to be a rout. As Johnson, sorry, Pollock looks to reduce the deficit to 10 points with this kick. And he did, he does. He does. He did it. So, 17 points to 10. Looks a lot more respectable. Seven. Sorry, seven, 17 points to 7. Looks a lot more respectable. 10 points in it. 21 minutes gone. First quarter gone. Well, yeah, the first five, ten minutes, Terry, you thought that was going to be a, yeah. a completely different... Uh, Never preempt anything, position. and I've told you all along. Rugby is a funny game. <laughs> Especially when you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Tanumi to take the kick. What do you know? <laughs> Good kick. Hi, just over the top. Ooh, Knocked on by Pock. Play on advantage. Oh, look, this is where, again, turnover ball... Hull just looks so dangerous. How often do you see it from the kickoff, Terry? Hardman the... drives it in. He's only a young 20 year old prop. It's a young age as Joblin drives it on the front row again, doing all the donkey work. And now they feed it out. Oh, nice little show oh, and go. Show and go. Oh, nice. It's too easy. That's a cracking That is too easy. Well Johnson. played. Well played, Johnson. You can hear the crowd. Yeah, it was nice rugby. Just when you don't want Hull to score. You've, you've, you've just got back in the game. Ten points in it. And they do the cardinal sin. You allow the opposition the opportunity. Look. The, the, first up, the first missed tackle was... Um, three missed tackles there was, from was not Pocklinton. good enough for Pocklinton. They have to be looking at themselves, thinking, why? Why Why do we let that through there? Look, a, a, a lazy arm by the, by the covering prop. You, you've got to make a better effort than that, Terry. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Because if you don't, the result is well, straight through the try time. Yeah. And he gets to add to his tally, Johnson, after scoring that try. Yes. Stabs it over. No doubt with that. You never missed, though. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> you never take a, a conversion? Never. You not, uh, no. Uh, no. No. I, 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 I used to take conversions. It's not know. about you. Let's concentrate on the game. Oh, <laughs> so 24 points to seven. 23 minutes gone. Pocklington find themselves again with the kickoff. But just finding that lead of Hull just getting further and further away. 24 points to seven. Oh, well taken by Hamber. Just lost it there in contact though. Peters takes it on. Davison to to his big forwards driving it on they're taking a leaf out of say Hull's book is keeping it tight perhaps yeah. Peter's Morton drives it on still good discipline from Hull good tackling by Hull though on the game line Pop not really getting across that game line Toby with these drives that's good jinky running from Pollock though he made some made some yards there he did that's better into play. Taken on again by Durkin. Say so the the back row from Pock have been very busy. And then the back row play. Jackson driving it on. The back row have been keeping them in the game, if you like. Not just defensively, but also in the attack. Again, the back row taking on just to try and suck that defence in. As Peters takes it on. It's just not offload. Oh. Referee not happy with that. Yeah. And it's straight to the yellow. He gives... And we have the first in him, Stafford, the captain. Was it for a deliberate knock-on? So the whole guy has gone to the bin. Actually, it's Harding, the scrum half. So that is going to be quite a costly 10 minutes for Hull as we start our sin bin clock in the corner there. You can see the views at home. Yeah, deliberate knock-on. It's the naughty boy step for 9 minutes 47 seconds for... Harding the whole scrum off. 
potentially well, sto um, stopping a scoring yeah. opportunity the referee perhaps thought. Well, you put your hand in the way when the ball's um, being passed and Don't out. make an attempt to catch no, it, absolutely. You, 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 nine mm. times out of ten, they get, you go to the bin. Yeah, so they're going to go for the corner. They have got a good catch and drive pocket, and so it's going to be interesting, this. They're a scrum half down hole. They're not probably going to miss the scrum half in the next couple of minutes in this line-out, but certainly when it comes to punching, hitting through the side of the rucks and malls, you know, the, the, the scrum half is usually there to take any missed tackles. Let's have a look. So we've got... Bert's Same throw. again, I think, from uh, Pocklington. Nice throw to the back. A bit loose, slightly bit untidy. Top by, 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 the, by the hooker. Birch. Birch. Well, they pick and go. They're making the yard to the middle there. Jackson's the driving forwards. on again. They say the back row have done particularly well, haven't they? No way through there. They're going to have to just push it out a little bit wider from that tight rook. They're patient. They're building. The ball's it is available. very tight, very tight. It's tight. It's very close indeed. As Pocklington take it on. Davidson looks to, f to just try and... Oh, oh, gone. Drives think, it off. I think he's doing a double <laughs> movement though there, Terry. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Absolutely right, Mr. Referee. Oh, there's a bit of aftercuffs. Come here, you, he says. He's going to have a word with the Cut captain. When I say stop it, stop it, he says. Yeah. I didn't do anything, sir. Well, maybe. Yes, a double bit. movement. You call that in. Well done. I well did, done. I did see that. Mm. Look at this as he drove over. Slowed a, a little bit of impatience there. Look, yeah. on his knees. Yeah, it's tempting, but it's against the rules, against the laws. He was you know, held. Once, he was once tackled, your knees are yeah. on the ground, somebody's made a tackle, you have to release the ball and not try and go over to score the try. Well spotted, Mr. Referee. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. And Mr. Castle. Have you ever thought about refereeing? I did once. So we've got Joblin to throw. They've got no scrum half, so who's gone into scrum half? I think it's Tanumi. I didn't really he doesn't look very comfortable there, though, does he? I didn't want to lose my friends like you. Oh, that's that straight. straight. <laughs> was that you, Terry, throwing it? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> No, it reminded me for a second. That's what it reminded me where I was. Then. I had this horrible <laughs> sinking feeling when I watched that ball float in there. <laughs> was for it those, me again? Then? For those viewers at home, uh, throwing was not my strong point. Oh, oh dear me! It certainly wasn't. <laughs> okay, so Hull are oh, now oh. a man down. Um, so the question is, does do they, well, they have to play with the scrum half. He has to stay within a, within a metre of the scrum. So that means that the backs are outnumbered straight away from this set piece. As Where can Davison feels you have to be right? within the metre when you put the ball in. As the number eight drives to come blindside, knowing that there's no scrum half there. Very intelligent play from Pocklington. Just a bit lazy lay, laying there at the whole number four. He's quite... Yeah, I agree. He's a little bit uh, messy around that. A bit that, too uh, slow to get up on his feet. But well played by, by uh, Kay coming straight through the middle, making it very unpleasant for the Pocklington guys. But there is well, a hole there. A gap there. And he has found a gap. Very good interplay. Good defence also from Poole. Manages to scramble his way back. Stops a certain try there. And he just holds on to the ball too long to give the penalty to Hull. But hey, listen, th there is light for in the end of the tunnel for the Pocklington guys. Great interplay there, but uh, just unlucky for Kay, holding on to the ball on onto the ground. The frustrating thing is, too, that's two clear try scoring opportunities now. That they've, um, they've, they've got oh, they're running the it from here. There's no... Well, they can see the... I can see their strengths out wide here, Terry, aren't they? Well, it's dangerous in your own 22. Well, they're full of confidence, the whole pack, the backs. They're probably thinking, come on, we've enough of that messing back. Well, they're man down, though. Area. Yeah, it, is. it doesn't seem to phase them as no. the, the big, strong centre takes them on. And, and he's standing, to whom he's standing in the scrum half position and manages to take everybody on at the moment as the pool drives it on for Hull. They've worked it well there. 
And now the sea sends to taken on again by Pocklington. He's looking quite nippy, that uh, Davison, the scrum half for Pocklington, but just seems to be on his own too much. We are looking at three tries to one at the moment, oh. but you know, Pock Pocklington have. Uh, Bombed three tries themselves, haven't they? Two tries. Two, two particularly. They're having a go again through the middle. They're making, yeah, they're having success taking that ball through the forwards. So if you even got the yeah. centre in there, Hardy taking on the role of some of the donkeys as Holbrook drives in on, using his leg speed, trying to make some inroads into this very strong hull defence. Good counter rooking by the whole pack, though. It just makes... Just Making it awkward for them. Makes it really difficult as Peters stands and delivers and tries to <laughs> present the ball in a fashion where it makes it a quality ball for the backs at Pocklington, but nothing seems to be coming back. It doesn't seem to be presented on the plate. Oh, Run yeah. into his old man. He did. Obstruction. Did he hold on too, lo too long there in the pack? Yeah, I think so. I think... You know, they're trying to take Hull on at the forward game. I don't think they've got the personnel there. They haven't got anything in their armoury. As, again, Hull look to spread it wide. They're really confident as Birch steps. Looks strong. They don't seem to be missing at the moment, Harding at scrum half, do they? To think that Hull now are 14 men to Pocklington's 15. They haven't really taken the advantage, Pocklington, have they? They've kept it very tight. They did. Uh, I can see why. I can see why. That's good defence by Hull. I think one of the old sparring partners in the stand there, Terry from Pocklington, Mick, Mick Watson. Did well, see Mick there? Watson. I didn't see him watching the game. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah. The old uh, West Hartley pool played at uh, Harlequins, played in the north against uh, New Zealand with me. They did, that's right. Oh, the good step in there. That's a nice bit of Pollock. Pollock. Yeah. Not held. You can go forward that. You can keep, yes, you keep can. going. Oh, it's just, just execution there. The moment letting pop down. The vital moment. Because they've, they've been in this game for the last 15 minutes, Terry. Mm, you're right. Okay, I, the player advantage but but again Ian, they have to capitalise on the fact that they're one man up you know Pocklington are one man up and they just don't seem to be able to retain the ball and hold on to the ball sufficiently long enough to create quality ball to allow them to have a sustained attack no, no you're right that's frustrating we're looking at the sin bin on the bottom left of your screen now three tries to one but one minute 16 but the referee's whistle has stopped so I suspect he's going to stop the sin bin and having said that ours is a rolling clock we the referee stopped his clock there so let's have a look what's happening here Ooh, I think we're looking at a dislocated finger in here oh lovely have to come off there they'll pop that back in I'm sure he'll strap it up and back on it's times like this, I'm quite pleased I'm sat here having a cup of tea watching and commentating on the game, actually. Mm. Yeah. Looking for a looking for a doctor? Yeah. In the house, anybody there? I was oh, speaking maybe. to Lisa, the physio, who's there before the game. It's not good when a physio has to be used, but it is good that they are there to be used in case they are needed to be used. Yeah. Oh, is that 100%. too difficult for you to follow? <laughs> do you want to say that again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. As I say, the light is beginning to fade. We're, uh, we're not even at half time yet. We've got 34 minutes into the game. So. Yeah, we're back on. Right, well, now we're back on. The referee's clock has rolled. Mr. Morrison from Yarm. We can hope there's not too many stops, Mr. Referee, because we may have run out of light, and that won't be good because there are no floodlights here. So, 
Tanumi looks to put the ball in the standing scrum half for the Simbind Harding, who's currently watching from the sidelines for his slap down. Well taken. Stafford looks strong when he comes from the back of that he scrum, does. doesn't he? Punching big holes and over, got over the, that You've got line. 13 herd in there looking to support. This is an old tactic of Gary Pierce just to drag them, trying to create an overlap on the left hand side, which indeed they do. Another strong carry by Johnson, taking three players to stop him. Just players in the way there. He and ah, he's pinned, yeah, he's over pinned the hole. Could, yeah, he's absolutely right, the referee. Absolutely right. Basically, what happened to, you know, Hull made the inroads, they did particularly well. Johnson sidestepped Sean Go, went down, and then the supporting guys who were coming to, to Rook, clear the Rook out, didn't stay on their feet, fell straight over on the ball. Penalty. One of the rules, one of the, one of the things you talk to the kids in, in, in Middlesbrough, stay, stay on your feet, feet stay on in your that feet. Rook area. So we're looking at yep. 36 minutes gone, four minutes left. The sin bin's up, but has the referee noticed? But again, it's up to the referee's discretion. I hope he's looked at his watch. I'm sure that the whole captain, the whole players, the whole coach will be shouting, what about the sin bin referee? What about the sin bin? As Birch throws in for Pockington. They've done all right in the line-out. They usually throw to the back, and indeed they do go to the back again. As well Great playing, take yeah, by again. Peters. And moving it into the, into the back. And Flint at the back there, uh, passes the it back. back to his... Fellow, second row. No purchase there, so they're moving into the into their back line. Well picked died, up off his he died toes. on him though. But again, that that, that looks like well, it all him. started though. The the, 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 no the Davidson there. to Pollock. Pollock had to pick a dipping ball up. He was running away from the ball. The ball was dying on him. It always made it quite difficult for him then to distribute onto his centre. Really difficult for Hardy to just gather that ball, but I, I don't know if it's his fault. You know, it was the dipping ball from Davidson to Pollock, which was really difficult for him to handle, wasn't uh, it? Terry, execution under pressure. <laughs> it's a bit not good enough. Can't be going around executing people for dropping <laughs> balls, but <laughs> the execution. Well, he's back on now, anyway. Of the core skill was not. Harding's there. back on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me restate that. <laughs> so the first time so Tommy Simbin in Harding puts the ball in. Strong, Are we going to see scrum parity there? And Hull moving it. Oh, lost, lost his footing. Coming straight from the side yeah, there. Absolutely. Hull brow. So they eight. should look for you a quick tap. If I cannot, you cannot clear out from the side of a rook. You've got to enter through the gate. The not gate, your for, gate, the gate, sorry, not your yeah, the gate, gate, the gates, your gates. For those people at home, it's the hindmost foot. You come from the hindmost foot to to make contact with the rook. As Hull look to just nibble into the twenty-two of Pocklington, just outside the twenty-two, it's going to be a Hull throw from that penalty, just underneath Ian, myself, under our studio here. As we look to see how the there we are jobbling throws. You can see some uh, uh, a hut. Well taken. Nice transference. Good drive. Again, breaking that gain line. Second phase ball. Oh, Pocketing. driven in. It's looks driven in with a lot of force. Referee's in the way there. Knock on, says the referee. He's given the knock on. Ooh, something going on there. A lot of handbags. Jobling just get a bit of a forearm there. If, uh, if I saw that, it's a bit uncalled for, Mr. Jobling. Hmm. On his 100th game today, Ian. Having, having, having a winger ring into a prop. Mm. So just for those viewers at home, and for Ian who hasn't done his homework, this is the hooker, Joblin's 100th game this afternoon for Hull. He's been here for a few, t few years now. So congratulations to uh, Joblin on his 100th game yeah, today. Absolutely. But very lucky to not get a good ticking off from the referee from that soft forearm into the winger's face there. No, I think As it it was, it was nothing, Terry. Davidson puts the ball in. We're looking at your nose. <laughs> it was nothing. It was your nose has seen a few of those in the time, hasn't it? It, it? <laughs> it was nothing. <laughs> OK, so we've got Davidson putting the ball in for Pockleton. Can they orchestrate anything from their own 22? Bit of pressure there. It was 
Good scrum by Pock then, taking that. Oh, slipping about. A strong carry. It was a strong carry. Oh, charge, charge down. down there by. A little kick through. Spool. Pick up. Three gathers. He goes into the corner. Stafford. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well played. That's his first try of the afternoon for the captain. Stafford. That was too easy, wasn't it? Charged down. Played a bit of football on the ground with the... Oh, it was a good ball control. It was. Um, Fight to stay. Great a, play there by Pool. Pool bent down and pick it and pop that. He was, he was, a, he was a Leicester Academy player. Was Pool uh, last year? And um, I don't know whether that was Leicester football or Leicester Tigers, but he certainly showed a lot of footballing skills. Yeah, that was good. Good play. Yeah, well played. Well played indeed. Look, great play. Just allows that flip pass. Stafford, the captain for Hull. Just to stretch the lead, 29 points to seven with this kick. Probably just going to round this half off to make it 31 points to seven. Four tries to one. Concentration. Johnson. Oh, my word. Is it? Oh, he just pulled it. They have it across the face of the, the post. Well, that wasn't a good effort, but it, what it does do, it keeps the score slightly down, 29 points to seven, four tries to one. At half-time. Hull with a bit of a canter, but Hull are coming in, where Pocklington are staying out. Well, we were told that they were all staying out, Ian, so... Uh, Ian set... Uh, sorry. Gary. Uh, Gary does set his own agenda. Yeah. He, won't, he won't be talked to, will he? No. He won't be told what to do. He'll, he'll do what he wants to do. Which is fine. It's his ball. Oop, oop, Careful oop, referee. referee. What's going on? Um, it's his ball. He'll play with it or go home with it. It's one of those. So just <laughs> very quickly round up. Ian, let's talk about that half very quickly. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. Let's talk about Haita. You know, the fifth minute, twelfth minute, scores two tries. And then he goes in for his third. And not soon after, you know, he's... <laughs> Got some pace, hasn't he? Uh, uh, lightning and strong, strong carry, strong runner. I can see why he's uh, he's putting the tries in this I'm season. I'm surprised. He he he's a great player, and he looks. You can just tell is 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 a class above most of what we've got on here. How come he hasn't been picked up by maybe a club higher than this? Well, he asks us the question: Why why won't he leave a side that's doing well? Yeah, um, he's enjoying his rugby here. You know, where's he going to go? There's only really one side in the area mm. playing a higher standard at the yeah. Ionians. Um, if he really wanted to go there, he, he would go. But um, he's he's happy here, and yeah. um, he's doing a good job for Hull. He is. He's doing a great job. Yeah. I mean, you look at you look at the the the, uh, the combination twelve to I mean, we, we could see what he can do. Heard who plays at the uh, uh, thirteen outside centre for Hull. The England played England counties. And then you've got Heater. Well, we can see what he does, the Romanian international. And we've got um, Ad Ad Adlard, the uh, the former Hull FC player. I mean, that's quality, isn't it? They've got some pace in that, that the middle backs for Hull. Um, and I think they've got a really good, strong tight team come together. I think um, the, the forwards are, are doing a job. They're, they're not dominating the, the, um, the set piece. Uh, and, uh, I think they've been controlled, but aren't the they? The defence has been good. They've defended well. I think Pocklington, uh, if you look at the, what's happened that first half, they've, they've missed a couple of opportunities um, where, they should, where they perhaps could have scored or should have scored. They had a couple of knock-ons and one player running into each other when they had the chance when the uh, scum half a hole was off with that yellow card. So they've been playing a very tight forward um, for the last 25, 30 minutes, whereas Hull, every opportunity they're getting, they're moving, trying to move the ball wide. Obviously, they know their strength is out wide. Yeah. And uh, if they can move that big... Pack, problems to pack around they're going to find the gaps mm, I think you, when, when you look at the, the backs I mean whilst you know we talk about the uh, Tanumi we talk about her and Haita and all that Birch as well you know he, he is like a local kid um, who came from Driftfield and 
he looks really quite light on his feet and he's, he's, he's able to beat people very quickly, isn't he? He's got some pace about him. Well, I think Cull have got a balanced side there this, uh, this season and you can see why they're uh, pushing for a, a top uh, two position. It, it um, scratches your head yeah. you think, well, hold on a minute. If Hull are third, what on earth are the other two teams like who are above them? Because Hull look quite an accomplished side, don't they? They look well drilled. They look strong in most of the areas. I can't see any weaknesses at the moment. You know, they just look... A very formidable side, don't they? They do. I'd be surprised if they're not challenging for a, a playoff position this season. Yeah. Um, on the showing so far. Yeah. But they, they've they started off and they had a draw, then a couple of home losses, uh, close games. Uh, but they'll they're getting better. Yeah. As they, as the season goes on, so they'll, they'll be more confident as they um, they approach the, as re- repeat games or the return games. I mean, we, we know we know Gary. We know what it is all about. We know that he. He strives for success, and ordinarily he does get success, doesn't he? Yeah, everywhere his coach is, all he's brought home um, championships, cups. He's done well as a coach in the, in the local area. I mean, when you look at what Gary's done, um, he was he was actually a former um, head coach down at Pocklington, wasn't he? He was. Um, had many successful seasons there. Brought Pocklington from, you know, a very very low um, side to to a very good side, and they went through the leagues quite quite rapidly and then he moved from Pocklington to Hull uh, where he is now um, had a few years at Hull had three promotions with Hull moved to Ionians had a promotion with Ionians mm. um, came back to Hull last year um, unfortunately didn't have any um, input into the um, uh, re- relegation of Hull but Hull have been you know doing particularly well this year and I think Hopefully they'll be uh, they'll look at some sort of promotion. It'd be nice for Hull to have some sort of promotion. But having said that, we talked about it all the time. When when are you happy being in the position you're in? When when are you comfortable? I mean, I always want to go to a, a higher level, but sense has to prevail. You know, finance talks as well, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, um, I've discussed this so often now in the last few months and the last few weeks about uh, aspiration and, and reality of rugby clubs in in uh, when it comes to below Premiership. You know, championship rugby, in my opinion, is um, it is in good, good state. You know, you got a, a league within a league there. Mm. Uh, teams like Rotherham who are struggling at the bottom of the championship and um, paying players half-time money, and at the top of the league, you've got play, players on million pound a year salaries in the same league. So you think it's all out of kilter, out of balance. Do you think? Uh, do you think they should split the um, the national division one? Yes, without a doubt. I, I just, my personal opinion, I don't understand. A national division one. Yeah, I think I think for uh, to, to allow the clubs um, to to invest in in the side, they should they should um, cut it down to north and south. Maybe even in yeah. even even in the uh, national I, yeah, for the, for the, the championship. Shall I yeah, say? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's views for and against. But if you actually look, take the arguments on on uh, the against with, with the travelling, with the, the cost, with the the fact that uh, you know most of the teams in national will, will, will can't and won't be able to play in the championship position, um, yet you think, well, what is the point? Where where are we going with this? What is the, the long term goal? Mm. Um, there are t- there are clubs such as Darlington Moden Park with the infrastructure to play at a higher level, absolutely. Coventry with um, a million pound budget with again infrastructure and an and amount of players available to pick from, absolutely. But the majority of those teams can't. So let's have a look. The whole players have yep. had their cup of tea and chocolate and bread, whatever they're having their pizza. Um, they'll be they'll be coming out very shortly. As I can't understand why Pocklington didn't go in because it is cold out there. And um, you know, the thing is that when you go inside, you do get the attention of your coach. You can identify weaknesses, strengths, uh, reinforce reinforce exactly how they should be played. And I know. Gary is very disciplined. He will get his message across to the players, and you're going to see, um, you're going to see the weaknesses of Pocklington perhaps exposed a little bit more after Gary's had his very eagle eye tactical awareness. Well, I think that that try before half time was was pretty critical. If I'm honest, Terry, I think that um, that, that may have broke the resistance of Pocklington. Yeah. After that um, 20 minute spell where they where they had some parity. Um, Hey, we'll see. I think um, Hull will come out full of confidence now um, to move the ball. I expect this young gentleman on the wing here could well be taking another couple of tries. We shall see. He has got a swagger about him, hasn't he? He does look confident, doesn't he? Well, Hater. Yeah. 
And he's scoring tries for fun, Terry. Okay, so, so this out. second half underway as Tanumi looks to get hole into the Pocklington half as he does. Well taken by well taken. Peters. Well driven on by Pocklington. Just still a bit static, still a bit slow. You see the, taking the ball forwards still. taking it, yeah, stood still it's so forward. easy to tackle as Stafford just takes, sorry, as Holbrook just takes it on. Find it, trying to find the gap. Oh, didn't get the bounce. Still pressure oh, though, still Birch pressure. looks to be under a little bit of pressure himself. Could potentially be a penalty yeah, against. not rolling away. Oh no, no. It's gone against, it, it's it gone be, against Pocklington. Coming from the side. Caught, caught there. That's the thing is that such a complex laws um, rugby union. You know, it could go either way. It's all about the interpretation of the referee. And the referee saw then that Pocklington came in from the side and thus giving the penalty to Hull Rugby Union. So line out to Hull just before, just on the ten within their own half. As the game slightly lost a little bit of its excitement. As Joblin throws. A lot of movement in the line out for Hull. It's just well taken. Taken on there by Hardman, the 20 year old prop. He got some pace for a prop in the good hands as well, Terry. Yeah, he has. Like the look of this lad, yeah. the future. Driven on there by Regasso. He's offering himself again. Moving and the ball. Offload, yes. <laughs> That's good, rugby. Oh, nice good feet. step. He's, he's going still. He's. Tanumi. Just a bit scruffy there. They need to push it this left. Perhaps looking to offload too much. So just well, it's the pressure. That, that will be that a scrum. That will be a scrum to Pocklington if they can manage to stop this ball going to the ground, which I think they've done. The referee should hold it up and it should be a scrum too. Yeah. Yes. Good that was poor, Pock. poor play there from the um the winger from Hull the Adlard. I mean that's probably rugby league. Um, weakness really not being getting the ball into a position where you can create the rook and some rugby league guys just don't like going to the ground do they well they run a bit higher they actually carry the ball higher uh, the, the way the defending league is, is a higher defence the first stop the tackle usually but goes it, it to was stop in, the ball it was too high taking the ball into it contact that, in. that is the problem um, it's just learning those two different skills when it, uh, union forward takes it a bit lower looking to offload or, or get a second phase on the ground from the rook but in league you don't have that yeah, you'll know because you played rugby, didn't I you? I did. To a very high standard. As Pocklington feeds their scrum, they're just creaking a bit, but managed to distribute the ball. Clear the line, they say. Let's get it out of here. Let's play from the 20. Let's play from the, the bounce as well. The half. <coughs> well gathered there by Hull. Feeds on to Birch. Here we get wide. Hata, he's, 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 is he going to look to score again? again? I think he again. is. He's going all the way down. He's show. Come, defence coming oh. across. Oh, oh, he's lost, the ball, lost the ball in contact. Well, he has to be. He has to be weak at something, surely. I thought he was going to go all the way oh, there. Sorry, he did <laughs> absolutely. I was out of breath watching him, but he is exciting, isn't he? He's exciting to see. Is is the yeah. hiatus? The is your breath okay? I'm, I'm okay now. I've got your inhaler. <laughs> Again, whole from from the full back Birch feeds feeds his outside backs Hayata looks to step runs all the way but the scramble defence of Pocklington managed to hack him down to create a knock on which gives now the put into Pocklington for Davidson to feed well the Pock scrum was held up so far oh no under no. pressure there Oh my word, that yes. is that is a lesson into how to scrum. And yes, the forwards will be patting their front row on the back because when you've been in a scrum like this, you feel good. That is why you're a front row forward. That is what you train all week for, not to score tries, to drive the opposition front row back as quick as that. That is 1-0 to Hull. 
Yeah, that was a strong, uh, strong scrum by Hull. And I can, I can see Hull capitalising on this. You know, the forwards at Pocklington now will be, will have that in the back of the mind. They have to now try and repel Hull's catch and drive, which has been particularly good all season. So let's see if we can have the line out gathered from Joblin's throw. It's going to throw to the front. Yes. Well caught straight right. to ground. Right. Straight to ground. That's fine. It just stops the drivers. Jobling takes it at the back. Goes sideways on. He should really drive straight and pass the ball back. But balls out. You can see the work rate of the forwards for Hull working round to try and hit the next phase. And again, they've got the overlap here. It's, oh, unlucky there by. Jackson yeah, but the lock on so Paul just knocked it on there but the back row from Pocklington managing to scramble their defence the position, the position but listen we're got scrum time again we know what happened last time psychologically Pocklington will be thinking where are we we're five metres out of our own line last time Hull had their scrum on our ball they pushed us back seven metres that will be going through their mind now. And I think we're going to be seeing something like this again here now. Psychologically, Hull are feeling good. Mentally, Pocklington are drained. This is a big scrum. This is a big scrum. Some big boys, isn't it? As Davidson looks to put in. It's a good hit by Hull. Just well, got the nudge they, on. They have, they have got the nudge. They... They managed to just get the ball out, Pocklington, but he's, oh, he's behind his own line. In his, in his own five metre. Okay, goal. touch the That's ball down behind down his line, hole. scrum down. Hull are going to look quite strong in the next scrum. It's their own put in. I think Pocklington lost, lost their way there. Mm. Lost the, 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 Their compass went somewhere, didn't it? Because you don't want to be playing any rugby behind your line. This is going to be a problem for Pocklington, the... Norris, who came on for Walker. He was in the bar. He was in the bar there. earlier on. I've been thinking to himself, I should be in the bar. <laughs> he's probably thinking to himself, I do not want another scrum like the other one. But having said that, he's done well to say that he wasn't playing, but he's not going to take any further part unless old Lisa has got a magic wand, the scrum half from Pocklington, to wave over poor old Norris's Left hamstring. Looks like a hamstring to me, yeah. That's a beer hamstring. It's not a beer hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would wear those gloves if I was rubbing his legs. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole guys are looking pretty shoulders back. They're looking pretty delighted in how they're scrummaging, how they're scrummaging going. I must say, I'm particularly pleased with how the back row have gone. From Hull, Kay, Pool, and Stafford. They've, all three of them have worked tirelessly, haven't they? Yeah, they're a workman like Pack uh, Hull. I think um, Fitz is on as well now. Fitz for uh, for Hull. Another great prospect, 24 year old who's just come from down south, come to work in the area, come to live with his girlfriend, so decided Hull was the best place for him to get a position for him. Good friend of mine, um, Andy Atkinson, a player who played professional at Wakefield, was a director of rugby. Sent him up here from a club down south. So I stayed him in this direction and he's enjoyed himself all season as Harding looks to put the ball in. I'm looking for a big scrum here from Hull. I think they might look for a pushover. Yeah, Indeed, they are going to be driving. Pressure on power. You can see the front row from Pocklington are up. Yeah. The referee should be blowing up. He's, not, he's, he's saying not, using he's not, it. He's not really bothered about the front row. There's a wrap round. Yes. It's oh. pretty simple stuff there. Good ball. Oh, oh. flipping heck. Just knocks it on Birch. It With the try line <laughs> opening. Frustrations are beginning to boil over. There is. Oh, my goodness. Who's that involved there? I don't know, but the, something's going to happen here. The referee's not happy with what's going on. He's no matter how many times the referee blows his whistle, they aren't going to stop. And there are a lot of... I say, a, oh, Harding on the bottom there is getting a good... 
punishment there. Some ref referee's going to have to do something here rather than blow his whistle. But there's nothing he can do at the moment, but he's going to have to try and resolve. This is, is going to be a test for him, who also is going to yeah. get in assess today, Mr Morrison, from Yarn. Well, discipline is a key, Terry, in this game. Absolutely. You, you always you call the referee, sir, and that is not acceptable, um, fighting in a rugby game, Ian. It's not with the with the referee. I'll take strong action here. I am sure. Yep, calls over Stafford, the captain, and the captain from Pocklington. I think he's going to call the whole number nine over, who's incidentally been um, has been simbined. No, he's he's calling over over Poole. What he's done, I don't know. We can't hear him. But he's calming it down. He's talking, obviously. It is a lecture, this and a half, but he is. A lecturer himself at school at Yarm, so I just, yeah, the timer has stopped. We, we are going to stop the clock whilst the referee does give the players a lecture. It looks as Go and have a word with your players, he says. It looks like he's not taking any more action, apart from... Which is fine. If you didn't see yeah. anything, you can't do anything. I don't know. Just going back to the original um, decision, which was a, a knock-on. 29 points to seven. Pocklington's oh, penalty. No, it's been Lice Hall. Pushing. After all That's that. just not allowed, pushing. <laughs> pushing people. <laughs> penalty. It's disgraceful. What's this game coming That's to? Shocking. Pushing. It's too rough. <laughs> <laughs> pushing in the line, I suspect. But 29 points to seven. Hull are leading. But I don't think the scoreline is reflecting the the um, dominance that Hull are. There's number 18 at the back there, Fitz. You just get up at the back there. Well gathered. It's a good step there oh, by that's Johnson. He's got a nice, Johnson. nice He has got a good um, step off of his left hand, leg, hasn't he? Driven step, in yeah. again by Hull. They are beginning to get a bit of momentum. They're driving on there by Stafford. As the fours look, just to slow it down, Harding has a quick look and sends off Pool. Again, Stafford, pick and go. Is that a good game today? Yeah, he has. Jobbin's had a good game as well, a good offload. Again, Johnson, again, he's, got, he's a good player, this lad. Well, but to be fair, sure, he's behind a good pack as well. He's got more yeah. time on his hands, hasn't he? Driven on there by it's probing Regarson. going. It's quality quality ball that Hull are getting at the moment. It is quality ball is driving it over the I think he's short. Regarso looks to try and make some available. Quick ball. Yeah. I think they're gonna be in there. Yes he is. No, oh, he's, he's cold held, held up. <laughs> they get led off I again. Like to see that one again. Pocklington, I'm sure. I'm sure the referee is always right, Ian. Always right. Always right. Can we see that again? I'd like to see that again because at this sort of angle, I think we'd have a better he may have look it. than the referee. But he's saying he's held up, not dropped, so... Just adjusting my set. Slightly clips there. As Harding looks to put the ball into the scrum for Hull again for what would probably be another powerful scrum for Hull, as I suspect Stafford will probably pick up and go right and link with his scrum half to feed the backs. That is just my strong set scrum by Hull. Getting the nudge on. Ball's available. Still in the back, it's out. On his Good feet, well, in third by Birch. Stays Not releasing though. The referee was quick, very quick in there. They're just wondering a lot of. Here we go. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this. No, we couldn't. Yeah, we just just missed it. Didn't we? What a shame. So pop clear their lines. It's 
the light begins to fade. Are you zipping up here and you're getting cold? It's a bit chilly, Terry. A I, think bit I, chilly. Might, I might put my coat on then if you're putting your coat on. Birch throws. Two Birches on the, on the team, not related, unlike my mistake the week earlier. Disrupted by the whole pack. They build again, start again. Offside there by Pocklington. You can see that. Paying advantage. No advantage coming. Joplin. Base of the rook. Picks and goes. Still no advantage. No, he's bringing back where the first offence was. Or looking to tap and go quickly. No. Just settling. Just got a, a, a quick text from my mate Andy Wilson saying I'm watching at home and your throwing wasn't that bad, Terry. Thank you, Andy. <coughs> Andy, Andy, Andy. But you're over with yourself. <laughs> yeah. But I must say that your jumping was appalling. <laughs> anyway, so not Paul, made touch again. Not made that touch. is cardinal sin. That's three times you've seen that today, and that's that, this level you, you can't be doing that, boys. Or moving it wide. So if you have anything to say about this game, you can tweet me at Terry A. Garnett. But please don't mention Terry's throwing in, because we know it was Oh, good. good. Nice good break speed. by speed. That's good into play. Good cover tackle. Good clearing out as well by Pocklington. Just prob knock, knock on by Hull, playing advantage. Yeah. Offside advantage. He's held up. He hears it's He's going back to the penalty. <clears throat> going back to the penalty for Pocklington. No advantage for Pocklington. Referee comes back. You're absolutely right. Coming from an offside position. Oh, tackling before the man was having the ball in. Really? Mm. I didn't see that one. I thought he uh, got man and ball. But let's just have a look. Was he held up here in? Well. No, he had it. He dotted it down <laughs> on the line. I think it could he have did been a dot try. it down on the line. Could have been a try. But uh, we have the luxury of sitting here, and let's have a look. Just at this angle, that was, oh, that was just the early one there. If you just keep this on this one, if we just have a look here, here. there, yeah, yeah. We have the benefit of replay. The referee doesn't, Terry. But I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> Give him a break. <laughs> <laughs> well taken uh, by Pocklington, but stolen oh, by stolen. Dias as Hull looked to come away. Here we Broken go again. play again. They always look quite dangerous. Good ball. Good tackle. Well played there by Hull. Just looking pretty sharp. Looking to play rugby every Pirouette opportunity hole out wide. Straight round. Although our man Hayata looks injured, which is a shame. Holding on. <laughs> well, if he's pulling it back no. and player, a player down. We, um, this is going to be bad news for Hull if he has got anything which is going to keep him out of not just the rest of this game because I think they could probably take him off now. Um... You know, if he's looking at anything longer than a few weeks, then Hull will struggle, Ian, I think. I think I so. I think they should take it. Oh, it, looks, it looks pretty painful, to be fair. Hamstring. It looks a hamstring as yeah. well. Yeah, it is hamstring. That is not good. That is not good. That is not good. Not good for Hayata, but not good for Hull. No, no, that's a shame. Because he's been the, the standout man today so far for Hull. Yeah, I mean, again, we're going to look at man of the match. We're not anywhere near the end of the game yet. We're not even into the final quarter. Two minutes to go before we get there. But, you know, there's been a lot of players uh, that have shone during the course of this first three quarters of the game. But that was a knock on. Oh, dear, that was slack play by. Didn't. Hmm, frustrating. Yeah. 
that is not what you want. You know, you should take the ball, look to pass left hand, look for your 10, clear your lines and build from there. But now Pocklington now find themselves in a very good position. 29-7 down, yes, but within the 22 of Hull on the sixth, like coming into the final quarter. They have to score soon. Yes, they do. Sometime today. They did, if they're looking for a point toe for this game, they're yeah, they do. You're absolutely right. Getting closer. So poor control at the back of that scrum yeah. by Pock after winning that scrum. And the whole look, look to move quickly, don't yeah. they? They look sharp. Jerry Martin's going in the centre. Oh, just lost his foot in there. Birch had oh, been able to straighten up. He stripped it. That's, That's twice that Birch has been spit stripped. Yeah, Jackson. Staying on his feet. Well taken again. Nice carry. Well, well good tackling, Johnson. It, to Johnson, me, he's he been is. good today, he's, Johnson. He's he looks well. very composed, hasn't he? Apparently, he, he played rugby league for Toronto. Mm. Wolfpack, I was told. Yeah. yeah. Today, so he's had a bit of pedigree from the league game as well. He does look comfortable with the ball in his hands. He's like, sound of a good player. His time with the ball in your hands, and he's had a lot of time. So having said that, the forwards are giving a fantastic platform for him to be able to show his skills. There's no way through this whole defence, is there? Yeah, defence is good today. By hole, they were full back on that position. They rely on that. It's good. Good, good hit. Nice little show and go. Good yes. ball. Good tackle again. You Wrapping can hear around the guys. Putting left. With the whole boy. the numbers Barking there. instructions. He's got through. the numbers. Pull. I think, I think that I think. Jackson's just think, nicked his way through there. I think the referee's pulled, stopped that for a, a tip tackle. Can we see that again? I'm not sure. Or oh, he's to having a talk. He's having a a word with the uh, whole coach. Did he go into touch? No. What are you talking about, Ian? I thought it was a forward pass. See, that's the thing: is at this level, you have to provide your own touch judges. And yeah. he's saying he didn't go in touch. And the referee is saying, "Did he go in touch?" <laughs> no, it didn't go in touch. So. This is interesting. Yeah. What happened there? Hmm. Just before that, I think um, he, he, he took the ball into contact. I think he went to offload out of this tackle. And oh, I think, I think, yeah, you're I right. Think, it I is. Think it I think the referee did think then. Yeah. It, it was probably a simbinning offence, probably not a sending off offence, but his shoulders did go slightly lower than it his. Uh, than his. You're absolutely right, Ian. I stand corrected. Well yes. done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Pocklington looked to just take on. He's on his own there. He could get stripped here. No. He's Pocklington did now. well. Just threads it through. Oh, Second time that Hull have charged their kicks down. It just puts Pocklington under a lot of pressure. Oh, nice, nice Hull have through. this ability with the winger for Hull He's chasing. Up. He's hard, picked it up well. And he has gone through the rugby league That's a convert nice. from That's Hull FC. He might not go into contact like a rugby union player, but he knows how to finish. Oh, that! I tell you, he picked that up really well on the on the run, Terry. He did very he well that indeed. Off really you smartly. Could, you could tell he's got some class and speed about him, can't you? He's got a few things to learn in rugby union, but he certainly doesn't need any lessons in how to finish and score a try. Here we go, Adlard, the convert from Hull FC, had a few. Had a season there, didn't he? To come down to Hull Rugby Union to learn how to play Rugby Union. Gary Pearce obviously being an ex-Hull FC Rugby League player, former international Rugby Union player. If anybody's going to teach him how to play Rugby Union, Gary's probably the man, isn't he, from Rugby League. As Johnson, again, looks to try and extend Hull's lead with... A kick. The 
accepted. He just pushes it onto the left hand side. He's quite a big. He's quite a big, solid ten, isn't he? The uh, Johnson, the whole guy. He is. He is. He's had a good game today. I'm, I'm impressed with his um, his effort, um, Mr. Johnson. He's def definitely in the running for man of the match for me. That's five tries to hold. I've told you all along, Ian. Pumpkin. Don't choose it too early. That's your problem all along. Something good might happen. Choose, choose what too early? <laughs> that was well taken. No, oh, little knock on. Gives ball back to Pocklington. It's it's been scrappy in that sort of area. There's too many too many gifts. Yeah, again, so hey, anyway, we got jobbling with a. With a problem, a few knocks and bangs coming in now. Mm. It's been a, it's been a physical, physical game it's up front. No doubt about that. I say the way that yeah. Gary Gary trains his teams to play, very very similar sort of styles. He has the big boys running at the small boys, um, which which puts a lot of pressure on the defence because at, you know it, they're probably quite resolute at the beginning, but as time progresses, the consistent driving into the you know, the 10, the big fours driving into the 10, 12 channel. It does, you know, take its toll. They do get tired and tackles do get missed, as we have seen this afternoon, In, But, yeah, the clock has stopped. The referee clock's on now again. He's back on. So, again, scrum down to Pocklington with Davidson to feed. I just want Pocklington just to get something out of this. Well, they put, they put a lot of effort in. They have put game. a lot of effort it, in. You know, you can't knock their, their commitments and their, to the cause. Lacking that bit of finesse out wide. A little bit of... Um, um, I'm not sure whether they're lacking the finesse. I think they're just, with the the power and finesse that Hull have got, they, they've just been completely outclassed. But but her drives it on there. He He's doing quite well. well. Wasn't held. He's allowed to just carry on driving. So it just looks a little bit Herman Skerm. There's no sort of continuity. There's no sort of pattern to Pocklington's game. Just a little bit one man relying on me. one individual yeah. to make a make a break. Whereas the whole side seem to have a bit more of a concerted team effort and a plan as to knowing what they're doing. Hunt, you know, hunting in threes and fours. But again, Pocklington looked to distribute the ball. They've gone back five meters. As you can see, it's really difficult for Pocklin to hit that rook to have to drive back well, five more metres. You've got, four, you've got number fours and number, number eights at, at pivot, Terry. You need, you need them taking the ball on, into the heart of the, yeah. the defence, not, not distributing into the backs. Driving on. But he's quite entitled to be there as well. Yeah, well it's, played it's nice there by Dynan. Nice clear up. Allows again Hull to just put the pressure back on Pocklington, back into their own 22. As Good chase. Saloa just took, looks to clear his line and doesn't make touch. Hull again come on the counter attack, and they always look dangerous on the counter attack. With Johnson again, reading on that. It was a forward, forward pass, pass by was, Johnson. I think it was. Don't have to think, Ian. I think it the, is. Referee's the referee's told us it's a forward, a forward pass. pass. Does that mean I, uh, the referee tells us it is? It is it a is forward is pass. pass. You never really understood uh, understanding a referee, did you? I didn't. Um, I didn't listen to them very often. <laughs> well, <laughs> apart from when they said off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So coming up to the last twelve minutes. Well, I've last 11 minutes of the game. It's been probably uh, not all one-way traffic, but I don't think the... No, it hasn't. I, I, absolutely so not. Pocklington have got seven more points and, than what they did when they played Hull at home when they lost 30 points to no, nothing. So, I think coming up to 70 minutes, 10 minutes to go. In the last 10, and you think Hull's job done? 
but yeah. um, oh, good drive by Pocklington. Say that is more of a concentration thing from Hull. Penalty, yeah, Pocklington. Well. Yeah, I, I, to me, that, that, that's frustrating from the whole point of view. They, they dominated much, much of the much concentration. Of the game. Concentration, Ian. It, yeah. That's all it is. All it is. I mean. You, you look back to the three or four scrums that Hull have had where they've completely annihilated, dominated Pocklington and something like that happens. It's just, it, it's unfathomable, isn't it, really? It's a word that I li- wouldn't like to spell either. In no, the scrum. it's not, not that bad. It was, it was a disrupted scrum. <laughs> so we have now Pocklington again. From that penalty, we have Birch to throw. Unrelated to the 15 from Hull Birch. But Pocklington have done quite well in their lineouts. They've a lot of movements. Throw to the back. Again, they do it again off the top. Off the top, quick ball. Little wrap round. Wrap round. Little thread Dink through. through. It's no Overcooked good. it. Yeah. He has. Oh. That was a collision. <laughs> it was a collision. And it was a knock on by Pocklington. So taken in by Pocklington. As the, light, throw. as the light begins to dim on a cold and frosty hull evening. <laughs> well taken. taken by Hamber. Hull look to drive it. Their body position's not that good. Jobling at the back there. Just needs to try and generate a bit of momentum. But taken on by Harding. Looks to box kick. And indeed manages to... Gain 20 metres upfield. Again, Pocklington with another attacking position. They're, they're a little bereft of ideas in the centres there, Terry, today, I think, Pock. They've met yeah. a solid uh, hull defence whose uh, line speed has been better. Off the top again. Looping pass. Just stop there. Not Lost the momentum a little bit. Ball available again. Again, lots of endeavour by the pop forwards. Moving it again. Good tackle. Taken by 18 there. Fitz, new member of the team. Beginning this year, Ned came yeah, looking for the big hit was Amber. He, he made that hit. He did. Uh, and that disrupted the Heard just drives it on. Looking to attack. Very composed Hull at the moment. I mean, puts the kick right into the middle with for Fothergill to gather. I mean, what, you know, the second row, he's on his own. He's going to have to take it into contact. Indeed, he does. He did well there, Fothergill. So all Pocklington can do is just try and... Not a... Not oh, oh something happened. Mix up in the middle, it's a playoff. Lack of communication it, there between the two Hull players. And, like, it opens it up here. Should have probably given it. Nice overhead pass nice, with nice Jobler, ball. with Birch just dropping over in the corner there and like completely against the grain of the game. But listen, you can't you can't knock Pocklington for trying. But it all started from that nothing of a kick, with then the misunderstanding, knock on play advantage, and all of a sudden Hull's defence, which has been quite resolute all game. Here we it, go. This is the misunderstanding between no Allard and. Fullback Birch, and then Pollock just looks to offload to 24. Nice little, nice little over the top pass. Wilton, and oh. there we go. A speedy hooker waiting there on the wing to pick up and Norris, score. Norris, yeah. Is that, well is that how you scored your tries? And 
No, mine could... was far more extravagant. <sighs> Let's have a look at this. Carrying the ball well, nice little backhand offload. Over the top. Watch this little, little dog. Watch this little top. Look pass. at that. Great. Drop it. Suspicion of a forward pass. No. No. Nothing at all. Norris just regathers and trots in. I won't say flops in. He trotted in. Trots in. Five more minutes to go. He just again pulled it across the, the front of the post. So 34 points to 12. Two tries for Pocklinson. Still got time for another one. So the, the, I said the hullbacks have looked particularly strong, haven't they? Both in flair, strength, and speed. Well, they lost their They're talisman. Everything. Learned in the second half, which I think um, disrupted some of their back play hole today, this afternoon. They want him back on the pitch as soon as possible. The next couple of weeks. Good leg speed there by the second row from. Oh, taking into contact. Pocklington, but just couldn't get it. But he couldn't get it back, Peters, unfortunately. But he showed some good strength, but again, he was isolated. All he could do is hold on to the ball. Referee penalised him holding on to the ball on the ground. Scrum. So you, your view of man of the match, Terry, as we approach the last few minutes? Well, I mean, immediately, immediately, you, you know, you go to um, Haita. Um, but, I mean, for me, it's not just about scoring tries. Um, you know, I, I think... It never was, would it, for you, was it? No. But God. No, I mean, if, uh, I'd, pick a, I'd pick a front row all day long um, because I know how hard it is and how difficult it is in there, but... Um, but you're yeah, not going to pick uh, a foot row. Uh, no, but Davidson has been good for Pocklington uh, alongside Pollock. Um, again, um, Birch for Pocklington at Hooker has been particularly good, just scored there. Um, I'd like to say the back row of Hull have been very good. I, I just yeah, think that's some that's of, staff has played well today. Uh, yeah, uh, Johnson for me has, has been in control of the game. I know that he's had quality ball, but as we see in there distributing the ball, he's scored tries, he's kicked goals. He's orchestrating the defence. He's orchestrating the attack there. He's telling the force to take it in. Knock on there, but... Yeah, I think um, I think uh, you're right. Uh, by a whisker. I just think it's too predictable to pick Haita. And, and, and I want to just prove it's not all about scoring tries. <laughs> As you said, as you say it. So, yeah, I agree. Johnson, our man of the match. Estuary TV's man of the match is Mr. Johnson. Holes number 10. Steve. Steve Johnson, all six foot two of him. He was born in Beverly. Good scrum by hole. Look at that. Go pick up by that looks like a trip. <laughs> What's he doing? He was close. That would have been a yellow. Mm. He read. Minimum, red card. Minimum yellow, yes. Had a good game, the referee today, Adam Morrison. Yeah. Let, allowed the game to flow. Didn't overreact when they, uh, the fireworks started at the other side of the pitch and with the... Uh, Scoreboard there. Well, oh, well, well taken. Attacking for attacking from deep. Still, still looking to play rugby. Oh, still looking to move the ball every opportunity. Just go around the corner of the shot as as Diamond takes it on. Harding feeds on some long ball out. This is where Hull are dangerous, just when they get it away from that congested area. Yeah. 
good tackle. Good tackle. Knocked Case, knocked him back a couple of yards there. Well, as I said before, the pocket put. Oh, found a, a hole there, in. didn't he? A lot of effort in today. Oh, man on board, but he manages to keep hold of it. The herd. The England centre. It looks quite accomplished, that, that herd centre. He does. Taken on again by Kay. You can hear the instructions being barked out by Harding, the scrum half. lock on by Hull there. It's becoming a lot darker now outside. The dust sets in. Into the last last minute of play, I guess, now. Is for any extra time, extra As injury, regards injury time. Uh, the second row for Hull, cleans his stud for this, probably what looks like the one of the last scrums he's going to participate in this afternoon. They've done all right, the, uh, the pack of Hull. The, nothing outstanding, but they've done enough to allow the backs of Hull to run riot in some respects they have oh. so coming to the final stages as the light fades here at Hull the former YPI stadium as they called it on Chantons Avenue good feed feeds Diamond lost the ball though Pockington regather it just a bit slack there it seems to have lost a bit of impetus Hull ball retention well, Pockington, something that Gary's going to look at and work on a little knock on by there Pockington there that with the ball must be nearly just about it from the referee but he wants to carry on he has a look at his watch mm, there's enough time he says I don't get much time on telly he says no I'll just have a, my one minute of glory, he says. What's happening here? Is it is an injury down? Yeah, Hardman's just taking a minute. He thought that was the last scrum. He's put all his efforts in. He's got nothing Had a good left. game, Neil Hardman, today. I've been impressed with his uh, his play. His, his hands are good, aren't they? Good, for good distribution. Yeah, Work rate's good. He's taken the ball in. He's, uh, he's distributed, allowed the yeah. wraparound. So he's done things... Ordinarily, you wouldn't see a prop do. It's, a, it's called a modern-day prop. Term. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're more than just a, a battering ram in the front row. Yeah, absolutely. They add something to the game out wide. I like you and I did. At 21 years old, I think Yeah, he is. 20 years old. 20 years old. Hardly. He's got a big future ahead of him. He has, it? yeah, exactly. Playing out, the last, playing out the last minutes or so of this game now. Holt, look at Johnson. Johnson finish the game on a high. Match. Nice it's of the ball. Like, oh my word, it's not going to be. Good tackle. Just, that's really well Good recycling. Gathered. Stafford takes it on. Little, got the ball out. Birch looks to just strain it up again. Runs into a bit of traffic. Looks slightly uncomfortable on his fall there. Harding feeds again. The back oh, row recycling just, again. Just a bit untidy, isn't it, that? Just a little bit untidy. It's quite a prickly character, this Harding, isn't he? Seems to want to get involved in quite a bit of it. Very, I'll say it again, Derry Moresque. Who? Derry Morris. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kate Pick takes it, it on again. Going to try and get something out of this. Well, already he'll have the bonus point though, don't they? Ian? Just want to finish on a high, don't they? Yeah. Good recycling. That's about the seventh or eighth phase they've gone through there. Yeah, indeed. They're on left if they can. Oh, a little knock on. Pockington. No, he's saying it's. it's referees, no advantage. Do you take the points here? <laughs> <laughs> they've tapped and gone quickly. Oh, my word. He's on his. And I think that's uh, 
the final try we're going to see today. It is spin indeed. In, spin out the tackle. Joey Martin. The old... Uh, Come on, as a pursuit. And just caps off a, a, a good performance by Hull. Yeah. Six he's tries. Takes a lot end. of stopping, does Joey Martin, at close range, doesn't they all? He's a big boy. Yeah, he's six foot two, sixteen and a half stone. I don't think I'd like to stop him at... At that, uh, at that close quarters. So, uh, I think we're, we're now looking at the, the final kick of the game. So, yeah. As we approach the 85th minute, I hope so. <laughs> You're putting your gloves on now, aren't we? We're going to go outside to talk to our yeah. man of the match later on and Gary Pearce and get his thoughts and the director of rugby. At the end, we're going to go and have a chat with the. Uh, the winning coach, yep. We're going to go to a quick commercial break as we go down. Yes, we will. Well, that's it. That there is. There we are. 41 points, points to 12. 12. Hull take the spoils. Not as much as probably what we thought it would be during the first 10 minutes when Hull found themselves 12 points up within the same amount of time. But here we are. Joey, 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 Joey shows yeah. his strength, hits, turns. Keeps hold of the ball and yes, yeah, twists, the, twists, twists out the tackle and straight over shows the, line, the yeah. strength. And you can see there, um, Foy from Pocklington just give him a tap on the back, you know, just say well done. well done. But again, it was just again when you look at the backs, it was men against boys in terms of ability, yeah. skill, yeah, strength, so. speed, wasn't it? In the backs at uh, Hull, they just looked far too strong, far too quick. Far too organised. Referee had a good game as well. Adam Morrison, the teacher from Yarm. But the the forwards set the platform from Hull. They, they, there was nothing outstanding about what the Hull forwards did, but they did enough yeah. to allow the backs from Hull they to, uh, they secured to the possession through. they needed. 41 points yep. to 12. I suspect I suspect that Gary will be slightly disappointed about a couple of issues, ball retention probably yep. being one of them. But again, you know, 41 points to 12, there's nothing much to get upset about. Um, but again, you know, it's a good win. It's a good full pointer for, for Hull. It is. Um, interesting to see what the other guys have done. Right, so, we'll go down and have a quick chat with them and we'll catch up after the commercial break. Yeah, yeah. see you shortly. Welcome to Camelot Cars, your local used car specialist. This is Hannah from Close Brothers Motor Finance. Last year, Close Brothers Motor Finance helped 88,000 people buy their next vehicle. All of our cars are sold with 12 months MOT and 6 months warranty. This is David from our warranty company. We manage warranty claims for thousands of dealers, not least of which is Camelot Cars. Camelot Cars, your local trusted car dealer. Purchase your dream home at the Wolds Retreat, a new residential park home for the 50s plus. Set in the beautiful Lincolnshire Wolds, a designated area of outstanding natural beauty. All homes are fully furnished and on full main services. Part Exchange welcome. To find out more, call us today on 01977 782 190 or visit greensparkhomes.co.uk. Auto Tints and Shady Days are your home and vehicle window tint specialists. With over 15 years of experience, our high-quality film applications stop glare, reduce heat, add privacy, increase safety and prevent fading throughout your car, home, shop front or conservatory. For more information, you can check out our Facebook page, visit www.autotinter.co.uk or call us on 01472 827 775. We're not your average window tinting company. Hard water doesn't just affect how your home looks. It can also affect how your appliances and central heating system works. A water softener can solve these issues. Water softeners can reduce the cost of bills, increase the lifespan of appliances and give you softer skin and shinier hair. Installation is fast, simple and you can start benefiting from softened water right away. Humble Water Softeners are able to give you a quick home demonstration so you can see the results for yourself. Protect your pipes and appliances today by contacting Humble Water Softeners. Hi, welcome back. 
Bad pitch side now after that uh, whole win against yeah, Poplington. 41, 41, two points to 12. I mean, they get the full spoils from the uh, from the game this afternoon. They'll need them all because obviously being third, they might, they might even be second. Actually, we don't know what happened uh, with all the other games, but. Yeah. It was just a strong display. I keep saying all the, all the time, men against boys in the backs. The, the, the backs are incredible at Hull. They, they showed a lot of pace, they showed a lot of skill uh, and a strength as well. And the defence was incredible, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the defence today was good for Hull. I thought, uh, I thought they packed it enough to get um, the ball that they needed. I thought the, the, the backs were slightly, slightly better than the Pops backs. That, and that was a difference, especially this lad here coming in number, number 10 for Steve Johnson, who man of the match yeah. we dictated the game well mm. and he, did. Um, he, did. he, he did. deserved it come in well, Steve we were uh, just talking about you there well done. Cheers, you're man of the match you. for us today thank you appreciate that and uh, where do you think the difference was between the two teams uh, maybe our fitness are probably willingness to play I think um, we're always looking to spread it when we can regardless of the conditions I think it gets a bit wet and a bit muddy on the foot but we're always looking to play we work hard during the week everyone doing extra fitness and stuff and it comes through at the end and this is your first season at Hull uh, I played for him a few years ago, um, but yeah, I'm back. This is my first season back here. Yeah. So where, where have you been playing before this? I mean, just tell our viewers at home, you know, you played a bit of rugby league, have you? <laughs> yeah, in my youth. I played rugby league until I was about 18. Right. Uh, and then I went to Bishop Burton College where I was at a scholarship and, yeah, I've not looked back since. Rugby union's the game. I had yeah. adult stint at Scunthorpe, but... No, Hull's, Hull's a good club. That's where I want to sort of finish now, I think. So, again, uh, I'll say, Ian and I were saying that the easiest choice would have been to pick Hull to scoring all the tries, but, uh, of course, so you went in for yourself, but it's not all about scoring tries. It's, it's about controlling the game. Yeah, it wasn't um, being played anyway, Yeah, it's not, about, <laughs> it's not about scoring tries, is it? Yeah, we never scored any that. tries. So we, we yeah. understand and we can see uh, when a player is controlling the side, controlling, you know, pulling all the strings, and, and clearly you were doing that. It's made a lot easier by the fact that your forwards, you know, there was, there was more than parity there. Your forwards did give you some good quality ball. It allowed yeah. you to, you know, to, to distribute the ball and, and, put, and put your guys yeah. into some space. And once your guys have got space in the backs, you know, it's men against boys. You spread up so yeah, long, didn't we? Yeah, fair play to the forwards. They do it. If we say to them, if they turn up, I think we win games. Yeah. Because our backs are ruthless out mm. wide. You've got Birchie. Stevie and Mike Adlard, and yeah. you can't be stopped when when we get going forwards. Mm. And the forwards have been doing that really well for the past few weeks, so you can't fault them. So your rugby league, I say, when you play rugby league, does it does it help you defensively? Does it help you with the decision making? I mean, in rugby league, you have a bit more time with the ball in your hands. Yeah. But today, this afternoon, you look very comfortable with the ball in your hands. You had a lot of time, and that's the sign of a quality player. I think rugby league probably didn't help my defence at first, tackling up top a lot. Yeah. I've had to learn to sort of bend up, bend my back a bit and tackle some legs, but. Uh, in terms of time on the ball, it's something me and Gary have worked. Well, Gary's worked hard on me with mm. since the start of pre-season. I've usually played it inside centre, so first season at ten. So, Gary is very unforgiving, especially <laughs> with you playing ten. Very unforgiving. I've, I've been uh, there yeah, with you all the time, <laughs> and you know, um, if you do some, if you do something outstandingly, it's adequate in yeah. Gary's book. But yeah. so, what is it like to play underneath? You know, to play under the shadow, of Gary, with his watchful eye. Well, to be honest, I'll bring him ask him in a I've, second. Uh, I've learnt a lot from Gary up this season, starting at pre-season. Like I say, it's my first stint at ten, and um, yeah, the thing is, it comes from a good place with him. It's not something where he's shouting because. He want, he's been negative, it's a case of he's, he's shouting because he just wants the best. And to be fair, he just wants perfection and so do we. It's what, it's what you get promoted with. You don't get promoted with sort of mediocre standards. So we're just looking to raise the bar every week. OK, well, that's great. That, yeah, listen, brilliant. we're just going to go to a quick break. break. We'll, we'll see you after the break. Season. Thank you very Thank much. You, Cheers, fellas. Thank you. Oh, there's going to be no, no, no break. No, Sorry. We're gonna, we're no, we're going to bring Gary in quickly. Oh. We're going to bring Gary in quickly. A couple of minutes, Gary. Good. <laughs> yeah, a couple of minutes from the game. So we just had Steve there. We've given him a man of the match. Before the game, I was talking about who gave him the man of the match. Uh, we thought he dictated the game well. We thought he, he just had that um, bit of extra class in the, in the, in the centre for you there to, to dictate and move the ball around. Uh, so we gave him that man of the match. What you, what's your view? Yeah. We were right. Well, we're always right. <laughs> yeah, of course you're always right. Referees. You're, <laughs> pick, you're picking. You, you've, got the, you've got the pen. No, I thought Steve played well. He made some lovely breaks. You know, if anything, we'd probably like to... Uh, he's got a lovely try. He did. 
did. early on, but yeah, we'd like to link up. We could have probably linked up a little bit better, and we probably would have scored a few more off yeah. some of his breaks. But yes, just uh, maybe you get carried away in a derby game, you get a bit more, you know, there's a lot going on there. We thought, you know, they slowed the game down a little bit, which didn't help the game flow. So it made a bit more arm wrestle, but uh, yeah, we're happy. We've got five points come away, you know. We got one or two knocks and bruises, so it gives us time now to recover. What's happening with Haita? Uh, he had he a, just twinged his hamstring slightly. Nothing, uh, too, nothing too bad. Serious. And Paul uh, Hamber, he just hurt his shoulder slightly, but yeah, they'll be fine. But um, no, hey, hey, all credit to Pop. We knew what they would be about. They'd come and they rocked up and they got stuck into us. And hey, that's what you expect in a derby game. And uh, by the day, we have a bit of class. We got the five points and we'll we'll move on. Well, we've got a minute to go, Terry. End of the game, end of our, our programme. So yeah. quickly Let's bring, have in a the, quick, the, the, uh, bring in the pop, pop coach. coach. Right. Well, yeah. Thank you. Quick wrap up. Uh, unlucky. You played good effort by yeah. your team. Yeah. Stack at it well. Um, but I think the class showed at the end by Hull. They did. It did. It did. It did. But extremely proud of proud of the boys. I mean, the second half, apart from that try at the end, we would have won the second half 7-5, so you can't ask for more no, than that I from the boys. And it's I think nice to see the hooker going in at the end. It's nice to see the hooker, hooker going in. Try, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's important. It'll never happen in red. Red. <laughs> It'll never happen in your day, Tess. It'll be on a halfway show and go on. <laughs> but I say 41-12, guys. There must be bits in it that you're still slightly disappointed because I know you. I saw a few things yeah, down the side. I'm massively disappointed in how we played. I got to be honest, yeah. but I thought referee killed the game. A ruck time, he just let the ruck become a farce. He lost control for me. But hey, you play the ref, and, and we've got to manage them things better ourselves. We are young and we're learning, but yeah, I mean. Yeah. We, we, we left 25, 30 points on our board. But all credit right. to Park, they, they, they wrapped it. We've got, got, wrap we got 30 seconds. I know we have, but I'll just very game. quickly. I thought the referee had it quite a bit. <laughs> You're going to say. Hey, look. There you are. Look. Anyway, look. As far as the, 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 the referee's going, never ever argue with the referee, but it's been a great afternoon. And thanks, lads. Thanks for joining. Thanks Cheers. to these guys. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you hopefully in the new year. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good Christmas, everybody. Yeah.